It's Thursday night. We all know what that means. Do we? I'm not sure I always do. But it's Thursday night, which means it's Gab and Doodle time. So we're at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. I don't know if it's standard time or anything of the sort, but it's, it's 8 p.m. Eastern. And it's time for us to have some Gab and Doodle. So let me get my uh, cell phone set up here. Switch so I can see my live feed and I can keep track of things. Here we go, and I'm gonna um, make a little Ask Us Anything. So we can, hey, illustrate it. Ask us anything. And then we'll let in our special guest here in a matter of seconds. Um, so, Mysterious Backdrop. Oh, you've never seen this, Illustrated? Yeah, this is the new, uh, this is a new gold curtain. So it looks like I'm official. I want one of those old, like, 70s, uh, like, or like Bob Barker microphones so I can, like, feel like I'm in that vibe. But I went with gold because I thought it was cooler. Um, so tonight we are going to have on a, a, a personal fave here in this household, someone that I've um, loved uh, their work for, for quite some time, and I'm sure everybody probably knows um, quite well, specifically because of probably this book, Island Born. Um, that was uh, a combination of Leo Espinosa, who's our guest tonight, and Juno uh, Diaz, Diaz, uh, and amazing, amazing color work and uh liveliness but the other one that i got that i just i saw this on the shelf and i was so in love with this cover and i want to ask about some of these things like these covers but the book like um which is annie barros and leo espinosa and again the colors and the vibrancy and all that stuff in these books is is just overwhelming um but this cover just got me right off the bat as a as someone who loves design and loves uh when people really get fun with the typography uh, that one just got me right away. So we're going to be talking to Leo uh, tonight. Um, I, I, one of the ones that um, also was sort of stellar for me was the the world belonged to us, um, which has this whole like sixty late sixties early seventies vibe uh, to the whole thing um, that was sort of of my childhood era. Not that I was in that era, but uh, I grew up in the late. 70, or I was born in the late 70s, but it reminds me of like old Sesame Street episodes and like just the colors and the choices. And so we're going to have a chance to talk to him. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Leo in. I'm going to send a little uh, uh, invite here. So let me get that all set up. Uh, let's see. Studio. Sorry, sorry, I have to type it in here. In my Come on. Things were running a little slow here on me. Espinosa. Hold on a second. I'm trying to get. Why the. Let's have a challenge here. Something's wrong with the invite. Hold on one second. Uh, let me see if I can figure out what's going on here. It's having trouble searching for me. Give me one second. Weird. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Why am I having problems with this? I've never had a problem getting someone in, and all of a sudden, this time, it's it's having problems. Let me go back out here and make sure I enter it incorrectly, because it shouldn't have this many problems. Hopefully, Leo is on. Maybe that's the issue here. It's not letting me enter the name properly. Hopefully, we can get this to work. Super weird. I'm a host. All right, everybody, hold on. I'm sorry, this is, this is, I'm having problems with this. So Leo, if you are watching, if you could actually request, it's a little camera at the bottom with a little plus sign and see if that sort of clicks on this. I'm not sure why I'm getting 
Oh, there it goes. But why was it not populating, though? I should be able to populate it. There it goes. Oh, there we go. Okay. Should take a second and let it will pop in. So we have the invite sent. There we go. And <laughs> we had, I had problems. Oh, whoa, whoa, fancy. I don't know how that happened. I guess uh, the thumbs up, <laughs> click that. Let me see, let me try. That's, oh yeah, look at that. You got like, you got special effects. I don't have special I, effects, I don't have special effects. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> That just happened. That's pretty awesome. That's the first time someone came on to their own fireworks in the background. Let's try it again. Yeah. Would it happen? No. Oh, yeah. there it goes. There yeah. goes. <laughs> Dude. It's so perfect. And it's like right behind your head and everything. Um, so, <laughs> like it wasn't like off to the side. The explosion was like perfectly behind your head as it came out. Uh, so uh, I don't. Wait, let me try. Oh, it did it. <laughs> I got I got my own pyrotechnics here too. Um, breaking breaking Instagram tonight. This, this is funny. I've never known that it's done that this entire time. Um, so <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you for joining me, and thank you for bringing the uh, the pizzazz right off the bat. Um, so You're uh, welcome. what what we do here, uh, and I've I've already sort of relayed some of this to you, but uh, for those that are watching, is just sort of a conversation uh, between two people making art and chatting about life and anything and everything. Um, and I threw in the comments a thing that says, ask us anything, and you can um, go uh, literally ask anything. And, and if, if Leo here does not want to answer, he doesn't have to. Right. But I'm uh, just we'll going to leave the room. Yeah. I'll, I'll, try to answer, I'll try to answer anything I can as long as it doesn't uh, infringe on anybody's rights. Um, and so uh, this is just a chance for us to sort of have a good time and join us. And so what I ask of you, uh, Leo, is to give everybody a little synopsis of who you are. Well, first <laughs> they should know. Well, no. They should yeah. know. No. If they don't, they should get out of the conversation. But who are you? Mark, thank you for, thank you for inviting me. I'm, uh, I'm an illustrator of a bunch of things. I started my life as a, as a graphic designer. That's what I went to school for. Um, did a lot of work work with in that in that um, arena love it so much but from that because the style of um, design that I always did that was always based in illustration and the designers that I liked yeah. had a lot of illustration in their work um, little bit by li little by little I started you know getting 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 tickled by this thing called illustration and then it's going to be the other day I was doing numbers and it's going to be, I don't know, 27 years ago, something like that, that I opened yeah. my first studio in New York. And um, I've been busy from the get go. Wait, uh, 27, 27 years illustrating or 27 years? Illustrating. Design? Yeah. Oh, my first oh, studio okay. was in, uh, in New York in uh, 1997 is when I started. Okay. Oh, man, I'm late. Letting people know how old I am. You're, you're still, you're still a, a spring chicken, and uh, that's a uh, yeah. I it is funny to think of that time frame like that is a long time ago, but it feels like like I I grad I graduated from college in 2000, mm -hmm. and it feel, to me it it you know I think back to the 90s and like art school in the 90s, and it feels like it literally was like 10 years ago. Yeah. But it's it's, yeah. it's decades, it's decades at this point. It is um, decades. So, well, that's that's pretty much everything in a, in a nutshell. I've done different kinds of illustration, editorial, um, a lot of work for uh, animation and yep. character development, and um, what else? Advertising, you name it. And 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 things turn into a new, took a new form about 10 years ago when I started doing children's books. And that's pretty much all I do right now. And, and I can't be happier. It's amazing. It, like happier than even when you were doing the other types of illustration and design? Mm -hmm. What, what um, is it that like is so special about it to you? It's for children. <laughs> okay. And, okay. Uh, um, and, and I guess, you know, it, it involves a lot of things that I love about illustration, movement, storytelling, um, 
having enough time to develop a project that it's not just, um, don't get me wrong, so many things about doing editorial illustrations under, under the, you know, with a, with a deadline the next day or the same day was always very exciting. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. as one gets older, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I love the pace of developing a project little by little and really get into it and learn the characters. And sometimes if I'm working on the bio of somebody, you know, some, some amazing character, I get to learn more about it. I get to go and read to kids I, um, at schools and libraries. Um, so there's a lot of pluses just, in, in, in what I do right now. I just imagine um, someone who does editorial going to show kids their at schools, they're like, here's this piece I did about the economy. Yeah. And like, <laughs> not as exciting to those kids all of a sudden. Um, the, uh, th was the editorial work, because I know that you did stuff for like uh, New York Times and things mm -hmm. like that, or was that what the editorial was for? Uh, yes, New York Times, New Yorker, LA Times, Time Magazine. Yeah, when you, when you mentioned that like, turnaround time, the speed at which like New York right. Times, you know, it's, it's potentially same day that yes. you have to deliver. And like, there is a drastic difference between that and Kid Lit. Right. And, uh, I mean, but I, then I, it's I, a project and it's done, right? And it's yeah. one illustration and it's done and it, that kind of has its own magic. Um, one thing that makes me a little sad, it's kind of like it, it doesn't vanish, but it kind of doesn't have the longevity of a book, yeah. you know? And, and what it means to a child to be attached to that book is the story that I worked on it's attached to somebody's life story. Yeah. Um, you start realizing that there's something bigger here and, and uh, bigger for me. So personally, it's, it's where I feel at ease. I mean, it's even the equivalent of I, because I did editorial for a while too. And the, the idea of, uh, I don't remember all the jobs I've done in editorial. Mm. I don't rem remember them, but the oh. books, I physically like have the copies of books here that even if I don't remember, I can open back up and go like, oh yes, I remember. But editorial is just like, you know, right. you get them out right. and then you move on to the next thing. And it's not that that's a bad job of any sort. I, I know plenty of people that love it, but there is mm -hmm. something really nice. And like, as you said, when you said like it's for children, like that is m a majority of the reason why I love it too, is just going to those events and kids come up to you and you're like, oh, I got your book. And, uh, you know, like going to an event, I know that a school is sending me some letters from students that I did an event with. And it's like, that's the, that's the best thing when you get those letters yes. and like, it's also exciting. But um, so let's, let's shift and let's uh, real quick, uh, because my wife keeps track, my wife is doing a lot of stuff tonight. Uh, whenever I do these, she keeps track of like everything we talk about and okay. all the materials and all that kind of stuff. And I know you're a digital person um, um, but just for for clarity's sake, when we when we document this, are we Photoshop? Are we yes? Uh, Photoshop, okay. Many, and many Photoshop. I do a little bit of Procreate, but again, showing how old I am. Um, this this traveling studio yes. sometimes doesn't work for me. Gotcha. I kind of like to have the space and. Um, the bigger screen here, the time, and you know, it's allocated for work. And when I'm out of here, I'm doing something else. You're on a Cintiq too, I'm right? A, that's it. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and good. recently, I, I changed recently. I had one for, <clears throat> man, I think, I think I bought it in 2010 or something like that. Like it lasted 12 years or something. Yeah. It, it, was, it was sad to let it go, <laughs> but it was, you know, the upgrades and, and all that was-, was Colors. Super deep, the updates, sorry, were hard to do. So I, I moved to a newer one and it's amazing. That's, I, I have a, a colleague that I work with that just replaced their screen and, and they were like looking at how dark all of the images were and like compared the two images of what she was sending off to a client versus what it actually was on her screen. Oh, and, wow. Like, it was drastic because the screens, I mean, they deteriorate over time and the color isn't as strong and the, yes. the, you know, like there's all sorts of reasons. and. Um, that I can imagine jumping to a new Cintiq. It probably came with a lot of bells and whistles that you weren't used to, too. Like, yeah, and I don't <laughs> use all of them because, yeah. you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a brush, too. It's a limited amount that I use. I more or less know sh some shortcuts, and that's the way yep. I work. I don't, yep. 
you know, falling for technology back in the 90s when this was a novelty and you really need to dig deep to know what a program would give you, <laughs> what you could do with it. Yeah, it made a lot of sense, but not anymore. Yeah. Just, I'm happy with whatever I, I get. I always feel bad because when I'm teaching like Photoshop or going through some of that stuff, there's things that students don't know, but half the time they're like, why don't you just hit that button? It will do the thing for you. I'm like, ah. <laughs> uh. I know, but like, it's, it's like, it's, it's a pride thing for me now. <laughs> like, I just got to do it this way because. Uh, like you have, do, do you have kids? Uh, you do, I, right? I have one kid. Yeah. I'm wearing, he made me badges today of a little bunny that I was supposed to wear on here, a little smiley face when I got home. He's a, he's three years old, I'm but mean. the whole family's wearing badges. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need one of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I mean, talking about kids to bring you to reality when it comes to technology, it's just left and right. It hit you. And, yep. You know. Uh, the, the, he, uh, uh, do you, you have kids? Uh, uh, they're adults now. Okay. Okay. Um, so our kid is going through the age right now where he's playing Fortnite and things of the sort, video games, essentially. And he's using all the lingo from the games. I don't know where he gets it. I just don't know. <laughs> like, he just picks it up so fast because it's technology. Right. But, um, right. Okay, so let's, let's uh, tonight, what are we drawing tonight? And I, it could be anything, like I said, you don't know? I'll take requests. Okay. I can, you know, I've been drawing all week. I'm a little tired. Um, and tonight, I unfortunately, have to cut this sh a little short because I need to go back to work. But um, anything that's loose, characters, you name it, I'll take requests from people. I can't really read them right now, but um, I can. I can read them off to you. You can, can I, if you want to tell me. I, I had already started with something because I wanted to. Are we switching to the? In, in just a second, I have a request okay. though that I want to see how you draw it tonight. So tonight, I'm going to be working on a frog piece because it's leap year, and this is technically. Uh, leap day and so a frog piece if you can would be pretty amazing and whatever shape or form I don't know what that means but yes frog. Oh, awesome let's do a frog okay <laughs> um, so let's let's switch our cameras and we can okay. get to our, our uh, down shoots and we can go from there okay cool um, so you hit the yep. little button and mine will jump um, so this is not a frog but uh, this is what I had started with because I needed to you know, figure out where, where the screen was going to sit and if I was able to see my drawings. Um, so tell me, well, it looks perfectly shot. You, you got it all in the right spot there for us. Okay, to, I just need to move a little it. closer here this is, or I won't be able to see. I don't even know if mine okay. can be seen on screen, but I'm doing a little crooner frog that's singing to a bunch of, uh, I don't know, Lady frogs, froglets. Oh, send up to see it. Oh, check oh, that out. Oh, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> it'll, yeah, yeah. it'll become something by the end of the night. But I just wanted to do a little crew of frogs. <laughs> so, um, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know exactly how it's going to lay out, but we're going to play around with it. Um, so tell me a little bit, uh, just sort of. Uh, the, you're like the. I want to say you're probably about the tenth person that I've had on who said that they studied graphic design, like in this in this last like few months. So mm -hmm. they studied graphic design and then became illustrators. Right. Um, and, and I'm wondering, like, I've heard that so often. I'm wondering, is that something that um, was a easy transition? Was that something that was a, a sort of, like you mentioned that idea of like, you kind of were an illustrator or had some illustrative tendencies in design prior. What, what did that entail when you said, when you said that? So um, let's see if I can put my thoughts together to give you a, a, a proper answer. Okay. Um, I, think, I think graphic design and illustration to me work hand in hand. They are part of the same vocabulary and they understand each other. Everything that we do as illustrators ends up in a published piece, right? Yep. And that published piece, unless it's video, but you know, video also contains design, um, needs to live inside um, like a universe that has been designed for it. So, oops, let me see if my brushes are working. Um, so in that sense, I was always looking at the work of illustrators and designers, mostly people from the 50s and 60s that were my biggest influence. Yep. Um, this is not the frog I want. Let's try another one. Um, <laughs> Uh, 
This is, um, and, uh, and, and that was informing my way of designing, but at the same time, it was definitely um, very clear to me that there was, that, that, that those two met at some point and that I could just jump from one to the other. You know, I've, I've drawn since forever, just like you have in the majority of illustrators. Yeah. Um, but I've also drawn type and drawn things that are re more, more related to design simply because I like them. Um, because there were shapes that um, were appealing to me. So it wasn't really that hard. Um, well, what's, what's interesting to me is like, I always think there's a spectrum in, in all the different types of arts, like illustrators, I think can be on like the designer side and they can be on the painterly side or somewhere in between. Like it ventures into that sort of like, you know, literally a canvas in front of you and it ventures all the way towards like, I'm going to jump on Illustrator or InDesign and do my illustrations there. Uh, mm -hmm. That that sort of, we all fall somewhere in that spectrum and, and hearing that you have that design background, it totally connects some dots for me. And, and this is, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some serious praise in my world right now, which is um, I am absolutely in love with the covers of your books. And oh. the way that you design the covers and like, the, and I'm not just saying like the type, cause I know that potentially that may be someone else, but just the, the shapes and the choices made on those covers are s so stellar because I don't know if I've ever liked a cover that I've done. Uh, um, thank you so much. That means a lot. I, it, you know, it's very important to me. That's the first, that's the first connection to a book. Yeah. With people, I'm I'm drawing in a way that I never draw. I'm just trying to remember something that is, you know, there's there's a frog in my head. I'm just gonna to trying to pull it out. If, and, um, if, yeah, if and it's, it's some, dry, we'll, and we'll, we'll give it, you a pass. It's some surgery. <laughs> it might happen. It might not happen. We'll see. Um, but you know, the covers being that first connection to the story and where you can really um grab the attention of the reader or the parent that buys the book or yep um the kid in the library the or... kid in the library exactly i mean this is that's your first shot and it's also a poster right you know poster yep. design is amazing and here's your chance to design a poster for your own book um so i pay attention to that luckily for me oh, oh i know what i want to do so these legs are going Anybody need some frog's legs? Because I have some <laughs> left over here. Um, they're yummy. Tastes like chicken. Um, Wait, have you ever had frog legs? Oh, yeah. Do they really taste like chicken? Or is that just sort of a, a the, the classic joke? I wish chicken knew that it tasted that delicious. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's very similar. Okay. Course, from what I remember, it kind of, it kind of, Tasted very similar. Interesting. Okay. Look, I, I never, never I never draw this animated, but for some reason the word frog just got this spastic frog in my in my head. I'm just trying to get it out. So <laughs> yeah, with the books, I mean so many aspects of the book where you're obviously thinking about design, um, title page, um, book cover. Yeah. Um, lettering if you want to do lettering for for the credits um but also you know the size of type the kind of type that you need to have in the story lucky luckily for me i've been working with terrific art directors that um listen to me when i speak about design and yeah. and uh, you know they don't have to do it it's it's they they have great people working in 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 the our departments are uh, with book publishers, but you know, I, if I have something to say about that, it's going to make the book better. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I mean, I was going to ask sort of how involved are you in that whole process? Cause like I, I end up doing a lot of illustrating of the type in my books or elements within uh, with type, just because that's sort of what I enjoy doing. And I'm wondering, like, have you had a lot of, I mean, it sounds like you've had great experiences, but have you ever had pushback of any sort of like, no, we're not going to go with that and uh, we're going to do our own? Um, not, not as much, yeah. really. Um, no, I mean, you, you need to know where your boundaries are and people are letting you 
bring ideas. You know, sometimes I do listen a lot because the process of making a book is it's a it's, it's a group thing. Yeah, it's collaborative. It, it's so I'm not gonna, you know, I I much rather have a great collaboration than you know forcing my idea into the the project just because it has to be like that. That's not the way I work. What about, um, what about is there are there things that like you know, speaking about it being collaborative, because I think there there are quite a few folks out there that do have this perception that like, I have this idea for a book and I need to, um, <laughs> not necessarily to like railroad it in, in a way where like, it has to be my way or else, but more so um, that just don't understand like how collaborative a process it is, like how much they're actually allowing you to be flexible and how much you're asking of them uh, meaning the publishers, um, but uh, have, have you had any experiences working with them on something like that where they came out with an idea that you're just like, oh, that's what we got to go with, of uh, you know, like either layout or some interesting pagination or you know anything of that sort? Well, it's it's also kind of organic the way it happens. That um, actually, I don't know at what point you know. Um, this is my idea. This is your idea. You know, they yeah. are, they're all get together and, and produce something. And, um, it's, it's super interesting and, and, um, and, and fun to do it. You kind of have to, you know, in the process of letting go and letting other people do their part is it's also, you know, you learn a lot and, and, and I'm here for the learning part. Yeah. How much, how much of that is done? Because you said you had a, a studio in New York at one point and uh, yeah, that's, oh, what, that's how, that's how it all started. Um, with a studio on, on 25th street and then, um, but sorry, I, I interrupted you. Oh, I was you were okay. gonna say something Ask, else. Like how much, you know, being in New York, you're obviously close to a lot of the publishers and things of the sort. Was that a time where you were illustrating? And if so, how much did you actually interact with them in person? No, nothing. At that point, at that point, I was just doing my stuff for um, for magazines and newspapers. Oh, okay. I started working on books um, ten years ago, something like that. I did a book in Colombia, actually, that involved a frog. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it so you get to see it. Oh, cool. Um, I just the reason I ask is when you talk about that collaboration, just that idea of like. Were you ever in the same room talking about the stuff, or was it all over the phone, or was it all through email? Um, um, well, well, for for children's books, the funny thing is that I did this book in Colombia, 2012 or so. Okay. An editor in New York City that I still work with and has become a terrific friend um, called me and said, "Hey, we have something in the style of, I mean, a story that that." Um, we think you would be great for, um, based in the style of this 1950s kind of illustration. Yeah, and and it just it just never stopped from there. It's just uh, from that book, you know, somebody else saw it and came another book and then two other books. Then I did um, Island Born with Juno Diaz, and that was huge for me. A lot of people knew me because of that book. Um, I mean, that, and and, that, and uh, the process of each one of them have been has been very um, different and fun, and I, you know, work with, with different kinds of um, art directors. They have different styles, and and since I, you know, when when I was a graphic designer, I work as an art director. Um, I kind of understand what they need from me, and. Um, and and I know how much I can push it as an illustrator. So it's just, it, it's it's a fun process. Um, it's all been wonderful. Let me let me ask you sort of a, a, a the educator in me has this question for you, which is, um, I've always been a big proponent of of understanding the other aspects of picture books or of illustration or anything of the sort, just so you make your other people's jobs easier. Like the equivalent of you know knowing how an art director works. Um, may make your, like you said, the way you deliver things or the conversations go easier because you have an understanding of their expectations. Mm -hmm. um, 
did when you were a designer did you work with illustrators in a way where you had to sort of relay from the art director side or when you were uh now that you're sort of primarily doing illustration do you think there's certain skills that would be beneficial for people to learn um that are not necessarily illustration proper but maybe tangential that you think would be helpful in their process um i mean if you're if you're easy going and you're an easy person to work with, that is a huge plus. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's not necessary, but you can make the process better for yourself or for others if, if, uh, if you're easy to work with. However, that's not a requirement. Not everybody is like that. Um, I know how hard our directors work and I like to have, a, you know, a good relationship with them and be able to work with them um, easily. I'm real. I realize that I'm not drawing anything. You're doing a lot, and <laughs> this is this is the learning curve of of the night that everybody goes through. It takes like you know twenty minutes or so, and then all of a sudden you're just drawing and you don't even pay attention. But it does take a learning curve for uh, for folks when they're getting used to talking and drawing <laughs> at the same time. It's I've been doing this for two years straight, and then teaching on top of that. Like, if you want me to have a conversation while I'm doing something, I I don't ever have to stop. But I understand that it is challenging. Uh, if you're not used to it. Well, the, the questions are so good. I don't want to mess them up because, you know, you're, <laughs> asking, you're asking really good questions. Um, I don't necessarily do it because I uh, want to make the, the, the job of an art director easier um, because there's something bigger at stake, which is making a really good book. Yeah. Um, but it's been the process I can, you know, my communication or my timing or or um, just simply being on time with my work and um, asking the right questions at the right moment and all those things that are relevant to the project, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be there. And I guess that makes their work easier in, yeah. my, in mine as well, right? Yeah, not that you gotta go set all the type form or anything of the sort, but just that, I think you're right in the sense of like, if you are an easy person to work with, that is gonna make like it doesn't even matter if you're like the best illustrator in the world it's going to make their their job easier and more enjoyable and your job more enjoyable and uh you know if everybody's smiling at the end of the day basically then you're uh, yes then you're in good shape yeah. um yeah. and that it doesn't happen with everybody right not all illustrators like you said, not everybody's a pleasure to work with oh and some people believe have me there's times when you need to push it because you know that that it's gonna make the project better. And sometimes you just have to push a little hard. I mean, worst case scenario, you know, somebody says no, and that's it. You give it a shot, but yep. you gotta give it a shot too, you know, yep. if you care about what you're making. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, I feel like it's those little graces that make, like if you can get on, this sounds kind of weird because it sounds like it's manipulative in a way, but if you can get on someone's good side by just being nice to work with, there might be more leniency to do something or to really have a conversation about something that may be out there. Um, I don't know, Mark, that sounded so manipulated. I, <laughs> I don't agree with you. <laughs> it's the, so like, I've said this to, to students many times, but like when I send in sketches, especially when it's editorial stuff, uh, I would always like make one of the sketches a little bit better than the rest. And, you know, the one I wanted would have maybe like extra details that you weren't getting in some of the other ones or, right. Uh, you know, there's ways to not necessarily be manipulative, but to uh, to hedge your bets on trying to get them to pick that one. And most of the time, they wouldn't pick that one for me. They'd pick the, like, second one, which I'm okay <laughs> with. But it's, uh, you know, if I send in five sketches and they're picking either the best or the second best in my mind, I'm okay. If they're picking the one that's sort of like, it's, it's passable or, like, this is more what I think they want, uh, then I have a harder time. But, right. Uh, it is, there is a business to it too that sort of comes into play sure. um or you can make a good argument and you know for you know why you want that one and just say it yeah yeah because <laughs> that works too yeah there's uh, i've learned uh, and it's taken me a long time in my career to to realize that i they're hiring me because they want my opinion yeah and i i think the editorial kind of uh kicks some of that out of you in a way just because of the speed that you, you just got to get stuff done sometimes. Um, yes. And kids it is very much a like, well, what do you think? And you know, the, the critiques or the, uh, the sort of notes on, on your dummy or whatever are always like a question. 
versus right. a statement and it's taken me a while to learn that that's actually like a wonderful process to uh to have my say um tell me tell me a little bit about sort of um like obviously doing island born was was a huge hit um yes. and everybody knows that book for sure um <laughs> is there uh I, I, that sounded like in a negative way the way i just said that <laughs> so like i was rolling my eyes when i said it but i wasn't um mark you are but, so negative <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, everybody knows that one. How everybody? Oh, we've heard it so much. <laughs> Island boring is more like it. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, the with a book like that, obviously you get recognized for that book. But um, are there are there other books that like that you feel like you have to live up to something like that now, like the expectation? Um, that, that one was so well received. Not necessarily. I think that book was that book and I move on to the other ones. Like the same way I get excited about any other kind of creative project. I kind of, I feel like, okay, it's done. I don't want to draw it in the same way next time. I'm gonna, yeah. I, I want to grow. I want to be able to this and that, whatever it is differently and, and, uh, and learn from, learn, learn from it. Um, I, for instance, when I did the, um, what's the name of this one with, um, the world belonged to us yeah. with, um, Jacqueline Woodson, that book, um, pulled me away from what I, what I was developing, um, as an illustrator in a way, you know, like all my books up until that moment kind of had something similar, something seventies like, and, and, um, I'm sorry, 60s and 50s. And this book was about the 70s, yeah. the era when she grew up and when I grew up, when we were kids out in the street. And, and what was really interesting is that the graphics of that era were so strong. And, you know, we're, we're all <laughs> children of Sesame Street and um, uh, what's the other one? Electric Company and all those shows. Yep. yep. This is like, so, as, so as, I, you were, as you were uh, logging in tonight, I was talking about that, like how much that book reminds me of that early era Sesame Street. And I forgot right. about Electric Company, but you're right. It's in that same so ballpark. You ha you, I mean, you, you have to be at that point, um, the way I approach it, the way I see it, is that you have to be working for the story. Yeah. More than, than you know, developing your own portfolio style <laughs> no i get it or whatever you want to call it because the story is king and that's that's i mean that's a very designer thing to to say you know i'm here to serve that project and yeah. that's you know i can't speak it in a can't say it in the wrong language has to have the right type the right colors the and and that one in particular had outlines i rarely do anything with outlines as you can see i'm drawing yeah. this frog um kind of off center um but as i just realized i should show it as we're talking about it here so people can see sort of the the aesthetics and i to me this was a book where i saw it on it on the bookshelf originally and i was just like this thing brings back memories right so quickly because of not just the like the aesthetic of the clothes but like the pattern choices that line work that you're talking about oh, some man. of the color and like the, it just even the setup on some of it is so mm -hmm. distinctly of the era and i you know i saw your name on it and i was like because I, I had known some of the other books and i saw that one and i was like oh this is a leo book and i was like i, w I was a bit sort of um I, not that i was like confused but i was like oh this is really hitting a specific era and like a, there were style shifts that's right. sort of harking towards that, which is, you know, hearing the idea of, of you trying to, um, you know, or, or in service of the story uh, yeah. is, is huge in that. And, you know, I'm wondering, like, do you see that as being such a dramatic style shift for you, that book? Um, it, oh, yeah. What, what I mean, it, I, I feel it. I don't know if people see it, but I do feel it. Um, and um, I'm so happy I did it that way because it feels like, you know, I did service to the story, to what I needed, what I needed, yeah. what it needed it. Um, and it couldn't be said in any other way, it's the way I see it. I mean, it's specifically with the subject matter of the book about memories of that time. Right. 
if you were to come in there and go, I'm going to do my normal style and it's going to feel like something of today, you know, it may not hit in the same way that that one did. Yeah. Um, and again, what is the purpose of style again? I, 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 I'm such a chameleon. I'm always trying new things, learning new things. Um, I guess that's a style in its own and, um, just keep moving it's a little healthier and as a, as a children's book illustrator i can't just i can't unless i'm just taking taking uh working on books that that um kind of gravitate towards the kind of of just one graphic style one one look one aesthetic and i cannot do that i mean this book was important to me so, and I wanted to work with Jacqueline, so might as well just do it differently. Um, how much of a conversation was there at the beginning about sort of the aesthetic before you even started to draw? Was there conversations about like, here's some resources or go back and watch these, these episodes of, uh, you know, um, Sesame Street or, or things of the sort? Or was it sort of, you just knew right from the get-go, this is what I need to do? Well, when you, when you get a book assignment, um you know there's plenty of time to start thinking about it right you get the manuscript and you you're already your mind is going um oh how am i going to solve this you know all the references that i'm going to use blah 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 I mean, so many things um so i in at that stage i do a lot of drawings okay um and and as i'm collecting my thoughts and my reference and you know they start coming out what am i doing here okay um as i started working on on started thinking about how to solve that one um it was almost pretty much since i said yes to the project the the colors and the lines were already showing in my head um, gotcha. so i needed to just do some drawings and i've been i mean lately i've been doing this thing uh, of sending my clients along with my sketches or sometimes a little bit earlier um a bit of how the, the book is going to look like you're showing your planning stage well yeah almost like a, almost like a mood board but not necessarily it's like okay. this is the way i'm going to develop the characters you know since yeah. i work in such different ways i don't want them com be, to be confused or be expecting something that i'm not planning um, yeah, in particular for that book, because I was moving away from flat colors and no outlines and all those things, then I put this board together and send it to the publisher and to the writer and said, well, this is more or less what I have in mind. And they're like, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So do it. <laughs> that was, that was, that was it. Okay. That's, that's, I mean, no, Here's this, your frog. This, uh, <laughs> is he? He's got the little tongue shooting out. Yep. Man, that's a you got some some amazingly long legs. I mean, it's perfect for the frog, but like I, I always do these stumpy frogs uh, comparatively. I How, think that's what was in my head since we started talking. Yeah. Um, and it just and lately I've been right. Sorry. Oh, oh, I just said and it poured out of you that quickly. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm lately I've been thinking in motion quite a lot. Like all these images just show up and, and they're always, it's almost like a photographic moment of something that is happening mid action. Yeah. Um, so. Well, it's like, uh, um, we're, we're trying to arrange with uh, Claire Keen to be on here. You know Claire, Claire Keen's work? Uh, Claire Keen, Claire Keen. I need to see the work. I'm so bad at putting together is names. Claire, with... Claire Keen is Glenn Keen's Claire. daughter. Yes. Who is a Disney oh, animator yeah. and whatnot. And, yeah, um, absolutely. Yes, of yeah. course, yes. And uh, just looking through one of her books recently, I was like, man, every single page. I mean, I understand it's a, it's a, a, a two-dimensional, flat, static book. There's no movement in it, technically. But man, the lines that she draws are are like so fluid and the action i'm the same thing with the um with the world belongs to us i was looking at all the like running movements in it mm -hmm. and um oh what was the other one it was the uh the no there's a point where he's uh i think he's on a scooter 
uh, a little like razor scooter riding through his house saying no. Oh, yeah. Those little wooden ones. That, yeah. yeah. Those little those little bicycles that toddlers use. Yeah, that one. That page in particular. That's what it was. It was one of those like pedalless bikes. Let me see if I can find it right here. And like the little gesture of like the the foot in front being kicked out so far and neither of them are touching the ground for anybody that's ever seen a kid on one of those bikes <laughs> was so good and like it's those little moments and i know that like some illustrators are like you have to show the most amazing perspective and things of the sort yeah. but it's like to me those, those things that really like show no man I, and i and i leave for comments like like yours right now what you just said that's that's um yeah those are the things that make me incredibly happy when people actually catch that i yeah. i not long ago i posted a skateboarder a kid sitting on a skateboard and it's it's shot from the front of the skateboard not the side um yeah and of course the weight kind of tilts the deck a little bit and you get you get the comments right away it's like oh that tilt yeah and the fact that people connect with those things is um i think I think it's magical <laughs> for me, it's it's like uh, i'm not an action oriented person with my work it's it's my stuff's relatively static but it's about the like design and shape and the texture and if i right. get to go like oh that texture is amazing then i'm like yeah my 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 heart sings for a moment or uh you know like oh the fact that you just put those two edges together like th if they can see the thing that i see is so good yes uh, and so it's like, just that I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that one is like the quintessential one for you, but for me, that was the moment where I looked at that book and I was like, that's the image. And it's, it's so like, it's also specific for anybody that has kids and has seen one of those bikes and how they operate. That it's like, you just knew how they ride them. Right. And that's With good one foot in the front because that's, that's how they learn their balance. Yep. Yes. Yep. I mean, my son still had his balance bike until he was probably like, nine in our house and he would just ride it back and forth in the hallway right um and it was it really is like there's a, a like a glide to it yes that you, you captured right that's so good um oh well thanks man <laughs> <laughs> no these are uh, this is this is called i praise the guest all night long and uh this, this is why people stay longer they they end up staying for five hours because i just tell them how great they are as we go along um <laughs> So you might have to stay longer. Um, no, well, uh, yeah, because I want to see the final piece you're you're making. No, you're really good gonna, with here. I get to I get to praise you now. Um, <laughs> I, I dig your textures. What you get to what you get with them. Thank you. One, and the final piece is, is is quite lovely. It's it's funny. I like thinking about. I mean, we talked about style, and style is a dangerous word in my mind. I don't I don't particularly like that. Someone said um, to me that it's uh voice is a better word which makes sense but i also think the choices you make yeah. better than saying style but um with, with that idea of like the for me there are things that are quintessentially me that i'm like okay this, this is what i want people to register are there things that when you make your work not that you're trying to like focus on style of sorts right. but are there things that are like these are the things that are the most important to you as visual elements man if in your that comes across then then that's 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 all you want that's all you need somebody mentioned said something uh of that order today in 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 a comment she said i i saw this illustration and just before i read the name i knew it was yours yeah um so are, are there else? certain things though that like you in particular as you're working you're like like for me, there is a moment when I'm putting textures down where I'm like, okay, I need to stop, or this is the right, you know, the right transition of color or things of the sort that like, uh, I, I'm actively thinking this is the moment or this is the thing I need. Are there things when you're working that you're like, like you're drawing a frog in a, in a, in an awesome hat there. Um, <clears throat> how do you like, are there certain lines that you're choosing or shapes that just feel right to you? Well, I'm, um... Kind of with the with the same frog i'm trying to find one that is in my head right now like he needs to be really laid back he has to have the right angle if yeah. he's not at that perfect spot then then i keep working at it as soon as i find it i don't i don't overdo it yeah um, 
once it's ah. once once the thing is there it's just like why bother like even with sketches you know i lately i'm doing uh part of my sketches digitally for for books simply because when i work on the sketches i have such freedom that lines and everything else just comes out so naturally and trying to mimic that later in the final it's tricky right people know that yeah yeah um the sketch so is always better sometimes i just save in an in another layer i find i i I, if I get some really good lines, mostly, let's say, for defining fingers or hands, that can be so tricky. Um, I grab those and put them in the final. And yeah, okay. Because because they are the real deal, right? Yep. So why overdo it? Why rework it if if it doesn't need to? So so let me, let me ask you a question, then that's maybe like again tangential to that. Um, with with the idea of like working on it to a certain threshold, one of the things I noticed in your in all the colophons on the book is it always says, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, a magical pencil or what did it yeah. say? This um, you know because you have to write this description for the books and it oh, seems mighty, so formal. Yeah, it says mighty pencil. Um, yeah. Do you, so how much of your process is in that sort of like sketch stage, and with like is the pencil in that sketch stage does it extend beyond that uh, sometimes sometimes but it's rare as i said to you at the beginning or maybe off camera i um i improvise a lot with my process yeah and you know if there's a line in pencil that i like me mostly because when i do my finals you know there's brushes that I use that mimic pencils. So the two of them blend together. I grab whatever I did by pen, in, on, with pencil and put it in the final. Um, or try to draw on a piece of paper, scan it and do it. It's rare that I do that, I, that, I do that, um, that I would work that way. Yeah. But the whole process of thinking of the pagination of the book, the whole, the, the, um, the first round of sketches or maybe even the second one, it's still pencil on paper. Okay, okay. And, and when you said that you'd switch somewhat to doing the digital sort of process there, is that, <clears throat> is, is it because of just the speed or is it, you know, like the, the watching you draw here tonight, I'm watching sort of the, the line choices and, you know, uh, and, and I could be wrong, but I'm not seeing lots of like, oh, let me undo, 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 and redraw it over and over. And so some of that is just natural sort of skill that comes out or natural sort of flow. Um, but like when I when I do my, my sketch, even though I go traditional in the end, I do start with um, digital sketches. And it's purely just oh. a copy paste. Okay. And that's it. And I'm wondering like, is that something that, um, is is do you have a reason or not necessarily a reason but do you have a a process that makes sense just for um ease or comfort um i'm really comfortable working on the computer if i need to you know it it, it also depends because there's some illustrations that require that you put some more, some more detail or or that the characters have a level of richness that you would probably create the first time or pull out of nowhere um, if you do it on using pencil on paper. Some yeah. other ones, there's this book that I did for um, for, for, for uh, Chronicle books called Like. Let me bring it. Oh, I got it right here. You do? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Trust me, I got it right here. This is, this is the one that like I was saying the cover. When I saw this cover, I was like, I have to buy that book. And I didn't even read it. I didn't look through it. It was based on the cover. Mark, and it was, it was Mark like, read it. Read it. No. It's good for you. It's going to make you a better person. <laughs> I, have, I have read it since. Uh, because, <laughs> but it was one of those things of like, as, as someone who has a design background as well, I was like, how did you convince them to just let the letters be so big on the cover? <laughs> like, um, it, did, it didn't take much convincing. Actually, that book was going to be, it was, was going to have... A complete different process. I spoke to the art director and the editor. Um, you know, um, 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 Chronicle is in San Francisco. 
And I proposed, hey, why don't we just get together one weekend and we take the design aspect, illustrations, and, and story, and we just brainstorm and solve this book because I wasn't seeing it in the beginning. It, oh, it really? took me a while. It's a hard story to to just illustrate. Yeah. And I saw that, you know, the graphic treatment, the there's something needed to be different, and it was going to be heavy on the, the design part. Luckily, the art director knew me from before. Um, she knew that I was also a designer, totally trusted me. We were going to do this thing of meeting together and then the pandemic happened. Uh, so forget uh, it. So I came back here and I started working, you know, adding my part uh, as a graphic designer to the process and say, you know, we have an awesome opportunity here of making a great core for this book um, and create a very simple palette out of it that would actually enhance the story much more than if I go with something more complicated. And they were open for it. So to 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 hear about it and propose the ideas, my sketches, they liked them. Oh. And we, oh. and we made the book. Sounds like my right? I just every time I go to publish it and I and I understand maybe it's also the the type of book that I've worked on for the most part. It always is like we want to get story on the cover. And the designer in me just wants to go like, I want to do a cool thing with the type. <laughs> and maybe, oh, you know, man. I understand the marketing, the marketing side it comes in and goes, you know, well, there's more than just like good type. Uh, and the book is going to sell better if we do A, B, and C. But boy, oh boy, do I want to get in there and just like, wait until you see this. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's very hard these days. I mean, if you go back in time, you realize that there's so many books that, beautiful books from the past that are classics and, that, that became hugely successful. They fail in many aspects of of, of design and, and 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 also included some ideas that would not fly today. Yeah. Um, but that's what makes them great, and that doesn't happen anymore. That's I mean, not, that, but you do get publishers like Chronicle, is someone who will do something like that, and uh, you know, right. some, some of the more like I don't want to say that Chronicles avant-garde, but like they sometimes will do things that are a little bit more uh, playful. In sure. Their approach. And there, there's other companies that do so. Like I always think of Candlewick as being willing to try some really artsy things that other companies may not do. Um, and, you know, they, not to say that others don't, but it just on a general basis, I right. always think, like I look at Candlewick stuff and I like, oh, they really had some fun with like the artistic side on right. this book or what have you. Um, I mean, for Major Taylor, um, the art director, you know, I proposed, can can we, instead of trying to find a really old font for this book, let, let me do the lettering for, it was going to be more work for me, but I wanted it. Yeah. Let me do the lettering for the title and the credits and everything else. Um, she liked the idea and we just did it. That's awesome. That's but I mean, that, you know you gotta you gotta know who you're working with. Obviously, I knew who um, uh, um, Chronicle was. Yeah, and I wasn't gonna miss the chance to propose something that was you know gonna be it was gonna have good design in it. Chronicle is one to, of those just one had of, to do it. Chronicle is one of, one of the companies where I'm like I've I've worked with quite a few different publishers, but I haven't worked with Chronicle yet. But they're on my like top tier list of, of publishers that I want to work with over time. Um, primarily because I've like some of the books that I've seen, um, like there, there's a book, um, oh, what is it? High five. That's written by mm -hmm. ooh, hey, Adam. Is it Adam room? Yep. No. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes. Yeah. And I like, there, high five. there's some wild, like weird proportioned elephants in it. And like some of the decisions that they or some of the like, design choices throughout and like the, the length right. of the book and the pagination, I'm just like, oh, this is fun. And so I want to get into that ballpark at some point. Yeah, I'm, I'm some, I sometimes get too concerned about, you know, this this thing is not anatomically 100% correct. Can you fix this? And you know, I don't know, you know, yeah. <laughs> if, if like, it's conveying the idea, it doesn't need more than that. And sometimes we underestimate the power, you know, the understanding that children have, they can't, they, they see something and they know what it's about. We yeah. don't have to completely dissect it and give it, give it to them pre-truth by, but. 
I mean, you, you talked about the idea of referencing earlier on, on some of the work, and I'm wondering when, when you reference, because I'm someone who doesn't reference. Like, if, if given the choice, I don't want to look at the original if I know what it looks like for the most part. Like, if you ask me to draw some weird bird that I've never heard of, I probably need to look it up. But mm -hmm. I don't sit there and stare at it forever because I feel like it stifles sort of my... Do you believe that I almost had to look at frogs to remember <laughs> how they look? <laughs> but before. see, you're having such like it's not the good thing though is it's not like when you draw a frog here it's not a you're not sticking to just like a photograph you're interpreting it and you're adding lines in interesting ways um right that... but I, you know i just did you know um major taylor who happens in a velodrome bunch of bicycles racing each other different angles yeah that um <laughs> and it needed to reflect like the era too, that one needed some serious studies of the times and how bicycles looked back then and buildings and architecture in New York. And oh my God. That's definitely one, like looking at the images that you posted online for that, I'm like, there is no way, like even even the equivalent of uh, uh, when he's riding his bike in one of the shots that he posted, his little tiny foot. I was like, oh, you captured. See, oh, again, in the back. I know which one you're talking about. This is, yeah, the, the, his little tiny foot on the pedal. Yep. It's so good because it captures like the, the scale of, this is, an, I feel like we're having an illustrator talk here, not just a like, this is oh, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the, That's what we're doing. Like, their legs are so muscly that oftentimes the feet are like smaller by comparison. Yeah. Always yeah. little tiny foot. And I was like, Oh, that's so good. That's my favorite part of the whole piece is the tiny foot. Uh, yeah. And like, I don't know if everybody noticed, I hope everybody notices that, but like, those are those moments that um, I know, I know that my friends and that are also bike geeks like me notice those things. And that gives me a lot of pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot you're a biker. That's um, true. And not, totally. not a biker yes. like a Harley biker. You're a, a, a cyclist. A, a cyclist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you may be you may be getting on a Harley on the weekends, and I don't know, but um, <laughs> that's that, uh, my that's my private life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't talk about that here. We don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't realize that you're you're getting in, out your leather vest <laughs> with your big hat on the back and just jumping on the road. Uh, no, I, I I had a motorcycle in the past, but no that kind. <laughs> Wait, wait, like, what kind of motorcycle was it? <laughs> I had, I had a, you know, a retro 1970 um, Honda CB350. Okay. And, and it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, and I would start working on it. And then, you know, we had a baby and my my wife said, you know what? You're the parent of two kids right yep. now. And I said, yep, that makes sense. That bike uh, needs, needs to go. And I don't know why it makes sense to me at that point, but I did and uh, don't have it anymore. That was is, the story. Is the bike actually gone or is it just hidden away? Oh, no, totally you're... gone. That had to go. I, I still have a scooter, but the, the motorcycle had to go. So the scooter, the scooter, you live out your dreams, just putting along. Yes, exactly. I still go me. <laughs> just revving it outside, out, outside <laughs> the schools, going like I'm a tough guy now. <laughs> Um, and, I, and I don't even use it anymore because, um, you know, I don't want to pollute. Yep. I, if I can ride my bike, I ride my bike. <laughs> That's So now you're just walking the scooter around? Is that what I, you're saying? <laughs> I walk it around. First I walk my dog, then I take the scooter out for a walk so it doesn't feel bad. <laughs> I just love the idea of like it's slowly like the, the, the macho aspect of a, a bike slowly gets dissolved down. To like you just you have a picture of it on your mantle at some point and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I remember like just crying. Oh, I about... remember that. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I I do miss my motorcycle. That was such a cool bike. <laughs> I would have fixed it up, make it look even cooler. Um, <laughs> that's you're gonna you're gonna get to the point at some you know like where it's just like I have to go refurbish an old motorcycle just yep. for the sake of like living living with the one in the same space again or i know i know a lot of people have had motorcycles that have actually dropped them over the years because of the same sentiment of like safety factors or you know uh, children especially especially in this area and since you lived in boston at one point you know the roads around here and oh yeah. my god yeah well i told it when i was in boston because of that yeah yeah i've never had so many bike accidents in my life than in boston it was insane I, 
Yeah. Well, it's just, yeah, none of the roads are straight. So you come up on people riding bikes. It was, it was so, mostly people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most, mostly angry people yelling at you. Saying, or just crazy. oblivious, very oblivious. And well, you were, and a bunch you were in of students. Cambridge too, and Cambridge has a lot of uh, pedestrians. Uh, right. On pretty much every street. So Sure. Um, and, th and things have gotten better for, you know, Term, in terms of bike infrastructure over there, but back then it was nuts. And we're talking about just the early 2000s. <laughs> Did you, um, do you, when you bike now, when you're out in, in uh, Salt Lake City, are you like on a road where you don't see anybody for a long time or is it? Is I live right on the edge of the city um, and on the foothills. So I'm pretty much you know, there's five more blocks behind my house before you hit the mountains. Um, wow. And from here, there's a couple of canyons that I can just ride up and down and forever and ever. And that's why I like this spot because I'm on the road, but I can also get on a trail. Do, don't do much mountain biking lately, but I have a gravel bike and I take it to those trails and it's amazing. I was, I was going to ask what kind of bike, because we've been talking bikes, but uh so mountain biking is the thing though in utah it seems to be but you know i i'm i'm a roadie i don't know if you saw my bike right behind me uh when we were talking just before um i i i have i'm from colombia and in colombia road cycling was you know way more important than soccer than any other sport really and um oh yeah i didn't, i want to i want to stop that like I would, have, I would have heard that football slash soccer would have been the, the thing. Cycling is huge in Colombia. Um, what? Why is there? Is I, I know, I'm not saying why. Like, how could people ever think? But I'm. What, is there like some? <laughs> is it like the terrain or yeah. is it? There's mountains. <laughs> oh, okay. Plenty of it. Um, when the Andes reach Colombia, they split in three branches. Three big. Um, mountain ranges and uh, yeah people like to climb up and down and go into really high altitude and drop down to sea level and you name it and there's big champions that have come out of Colombia I just I never would have I've never would have pinned that as like a, a major sport in that region just because I'm so used to thinking like soccer soccer, soccer. soccer. Yeah. yes exactly and soccer is relatively new in Colombia. I mean, no, no, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> got last year. <laughs> let's just say that this, the international success is much newer than cycling. Cycling started yeah. in the, in the fifties and it was since, since the beginning was, was huge and people went to Europe to compete. And uh, so, so working on this new book then must've been a, like, not just a, a dream come true, but must have been wonderful just because of the like the relationship of of your interest and the uh right. the the subject matter even beyond the the uh i forget major major the, taylor major taylor thank you um and he was from booster or lived in booster uh he was originally from indiana but he became big in 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 worcester massachusetts because you know he moves he moved there because apparently massachusetts was less racist than indiana back then yeah. during the jim crow era so <laughs> intense stuff that he had to live um but yeah i mean working on that book i did it because it was about cycling my you know and and cycling is you know speaking of, of drawing cycling is hand in hand with drawing for me i I've drawn bicycles since forever. I, I, you know, what we mentioned in the beginning of freezing things in the air. Uh, I drew BMX riders and people jumping and doing crazy stuff since I was a kid. Cause he was, um, you know, maybe, maybe what I couldn't do physically, I could do with my drawings. Yeah. Um, and it connected me and, uh, you know, I would give it away to my friends that rode bikes or sell it to them and, bike parts for my bicycles. Um. <laughs> was there, um, w with the, the uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, w 
with the sort of the, the long distance bikes or doing sort of road bikes or things of the sort, are you the type of person that would do like centuries? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's some serious, like heavy duty biking there. Yeah. I have I've a former student that would do that. And I'm, cause I used to uh, try to bike and I probably need to do it more. And my wife will agree with that a hundred percent just for exercise. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she, I remember uh, that student like came up to me. He's like, Hey, I heard you, you got a bike. We should go biking. And I go, Oh really? Okay. I was like, well, where do you go? And he said, well, normally I do a, a century every weekend. Oh and I'm my like, God. What? <laughs> well, that's, I'm like, that's no. serious. Yeah, no. And, uh, or the same thing, like my, my college roommate had a bike that was, you know, thousands of dollars, some crazy, crazy fancy road bike. Uh, and I didn't even know that it was worth that much, but he just, he was one of those people that that was his thing was he would go out there. And I don't know if he would do centuries, but for anybody that doesn't know a century is what a hundred miles. Yep. Is it miles or kilometers? Hundred miles. Well, there's the there's a metric century too, sixty something miles. Um, I'm training to see if I can do one. You know, I don't do them every weekend like your student. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think I but, um, but it's something that I'm lately. I've been really into bike packing. Bike packing out here in the West is amazing. Um, I've done a few rides with friends. You know, multi day rides and. Um, out in nature, out in, in, in Southern Utah, that is so gorgeous. Um, being out there is incredible. So um, the bike is what connects me to that. And, and I'm super grateful that I still can get to do it, that I use it to clear my head um, also, which is, it's, it's amazing. Whenever I'm stuck creatively, I know that I can just get on my bike, go up the canyon, come back, rest it, feeling better. Winter is really rough for me because I ride indoors and that's not ideal. Um, and I should, should be brave enough to ride outside, but I used to do that in New England and I think I learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> what, wait, wait, don't... you ride indoors, uh, what, what are you riding on? Um, is it... It's a trainer, something that attaches to your bike. Okay. Like the, the, so, little, the metal it's... bars that the wheel sits on and stuff? Um, those are, yeah, those, well, those are rollers, not exactly that. Those are hard to do. Um, it's something that attaches to your rear wheel or replaces the rear wheel. And now you get to make sure, you know, how many watts you're spending, how much energy you need to do certain oh. stuff. There's applications that take you places so you're not riding like a hamster. Yeah. Um, but you can actually do some mimic, uh, uh um, the climb of a mountain or stuff like that, or do group rides with people from other places. It's, it's has gotten quite sophisticated, but it's still, it's not like riding outside. Yeah. But it's your normal um, bike. It's not a special, just like, it's not like a Peloton bike no, of some sort. No. Actual. I mean, you can use something like that, but you know, yeah. my idea is if, if you have a bike that you can use indoors, outdoors, use that. Don't buy more equipment. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes and, sense. And that works. It's great because it's also my bicycle, the one that I use outside. So it does it does work really well. Um, so, but again, you're not outside. I you know I adventure outside from time to time, but then you have to clean the salt from the bike and mm -hmm. all these crazy your back, things. And your back is a lot covered, covered in slush because <laughs> it all springs up on you. Um, well. The, the beauty is that it's kind of dry over here, so it's not as slushy as oh. riding in New England, um, which is it's, it's a big plus. But, you know, it's dry and there's a lot of debris in the, on, on the ground that you bring inside and you have to remove from your bicycle. Is there, so. uh, obviously, like working on something like that and then working on the book, um, were there certain choices that you had to make visually that you, you know, knowing bikes, like admittedly, like I'm looking at the bike you drew right there and spokes, spokes are one of those things where it's like, I don't want to draw spokes on a bike. Um, not because I, I can't, but just it's complicated how those are structured. So complicated. <laughs> yeah. Unless, un, unless it's really necessary, there is a crash at the end in the book. Um, and, uh, um, that needed to show that the wheel was kind of, um, twisted and gotcha. of course it, it needed, it needed some of the spokes in there, but I just drew them when, you know, 
couple of broken ones off the bike and and um and that's it but you know if a bike is in motion you rarely see the spokes right so yeah why why bother yeah no it's it's there's, there's a couple of them like the spokes are like for those that aren't particularly knowledgeable the the gears like if you don't get the gears right I mean, I, I imagine it's not the same as like dinosaurs or trains, which <laughs> kids, if, if they see those, I mean, you know, that the, like little right. kids with that, yeah, they're like, that's not a ichthyosaurus, that's a whatever. <laughs> I, I don't even know enough to be able to make the joke. Um, but I feel like bikes, they'd be like, as long as it looks like a bike and has two wheels, most kids yes. are like, well, clearly you don't have a, yeah. a, a you know, <laughs> the, you messed up the stem. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that has 15 spokes and not 13. Everybody knows it's 13 on the, you know, the night. You don't know how to draw a bike. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> I swear I do, I'll, kid. Stop. I'll kid. show you, kid. Yeah. You're ruining my reputation in front of the, the others. <laughs> start to cry. Um, so tell me this, and this is like a, a longevity uh, thing. Oh. So you, okay. Okay, you come in from, from riding your bike. Yes. And then you have work to do. Uh, your legs are obviously probably mush at that point. Right. Uh, is, is, is your, because depending on like what you do for, for if you're going off roads and stuff, that can take a lot of wear and tear on the arms too. Do you end up having yeah. to take key lines for the rest of the day or? <laughs> what, well, you can, like? you, you can plan and do your, um, <laughs> your ride with friends after work instead. So okay. well, yeah. once you're done with work, then you call your buddies and you go for a ride or you, you know, I, I do a lot of solo rides simply because it's much easier for me. A lot of my friends that are also freelancers, you know, there are different stages with their projects. Okay. Um, so just get on my bike and go. Um, but I usually do it after work. Okay. 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 So you're not, yeah, you're not, you're not pushing or, or you could always just like do really abstract work after a bike ride and then you're safe. Well, I, you know, some, sometimes I do, I ride before work and, and yeah, no, you feel it. Definitely. Yeah. Coffee doesn't affect me because I grew up in Colombia and they give <laughs> coffee to children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're immune to I'm caffeine. So, so immune to caffeine. Um, well, it's not, it's not completely true. I'm, I'm getting older and <laughs> I'm not so immune anymore. Okay. So if you grew up on coffee as a kid, yeah, here, this, this is one of those, like, uh, maybe a cultural exchange moment here, but, uh, like when I was a little kid, I didn't have coffee. And if I did, I, it was gross. I just tasted gross to me. But right. if you grew up on it, are you super particular now about your coffee? Like you have to have this specific brand or are you just going out to the local Duncan's? And saying, give me, give me a black coffee with some, you know, with a shot of, of sugar in it. But how, how, well, um, it's hard to say. I mean, I, 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 I have my standards. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's, but, but, you know, what's, I, if I make coffee here at home, it's a very simple cup of coffee, right? Yeah. Um, but it need to taste, it needs to taste good. And if it's from Colombia, well, you know, I'm supporting the economy of my compadres. And at the same time, I'm drinking good coffee. <laughs> so you're, you're saying Colombian coffee is the best coffee though. Um, you can be honest. Yeah, for me it is. <laughs> I mean, at least, you know, as the, as the ad campaign says, is the richest country is the richest coffee in the world. I don't know what they mean by riches. It has, it has a nice flavor without being overwhelming or, you know, tastes like, Yummy coffee. Yeah. I'm not I'm yeah. not a coffee person in general, so I don't even know uh I don't even know enough. Uh it's one of those things that like I tried it when I was a certain age and it tasted weird to me and ever since then I'm like I'm I'm gonna avoid it. It smells great, honestly. I think it smells great, but just <laughs> I can't get past the taste. Like it's it's too bitter or I have to I, at a certain point, I'm putting more sugar and milk into it than it, there is coffee. Right. At, at that yeah. point, it's like, yeah, I don't really need to drink coffee. Then why? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Don't it's buy. A, it's a thing with like booze. Having you know, there's there's a threshold where I, I uh, <laughs> you know, I don't I don't need the fancy stuff, or I don't I don't need to spend all the money if I'm really just gonna just sort of coat the rim in sugar and be like, that's the best part. Um, 
the uh, <laughs> this conversation has gotten into a weird spot now. All of a sudden, it's okay. Um, I, we're still drawing. We're still making yeah, art. So yeah. hopefully, we're okay. So besides besides sort of the work that you've worked on already, are there certain goals that you have set for yourself when making art? Like, are there uh, certain books that you really want to tackle, or subjects, or uh, even like authors you want to work with? Um, making, uh, I gotta make my my own book. That's one. Okay. Um, and I'm working on it, and it, it's daunting because I am not a writer. Yeah. I know how to structure a story. I know many things that I want to write about, but but it's it's um it's definitely taking me out of my comfort zone. That's one thing to do. Um, if it goes well, I'd, I'd like to keep going, making my own books, um, obviously collaborating with people that have important things to say for children that are good for kids. Um, but that... I, I think beyond that, you know, I think, you know, children's books are terrific um, to make. They're also an insane amount of work. Yep. Um, and um, and um, you know, we know about that. <laughs> uh, if I if I don't make as many, and um, there's more space in between two other creative projects like painting, um, I would love that. Um, and maybe more painting in the future, less books. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Is there, um, so the book that you're trying to write right now, or I shouldn't say trying, because the book that you're writing mm -hmm. right now, so diminish it in any way, um, is it something that you've been working on a long time, or is it something that sort of just, like, at w what stage is it right now? Is it is it written, and it's it's being edited, or w where does that stand? Let's say um, there's a bunch of ideas um, kind of quarter, halfway maybe halfway there with okay. what they're meant to be before i started sharing them and and um brainstorming with my um with my agent she's a writer as well so um that would be the second part of the process working with her doing that that part of the of of the development of the book um but I feel like right now I'm at the stage where I still have not decided which one would be the one that would be my favorite story yeah. to to put out yeah, yeah. as the first story, you know, because hopefully this won't be the last one, but it is the first one. So it has to it has to be meaningful. Have you had editors or art directors at this point reach out to you and say, hey, are you writing stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Was that they like there is a threshold there of like you've been in the industry long enough that people start to go okay what do you want to say now uh, right versus someone else's which is uh, which is wonderful right it's, it's yeah. um it's one of those things that like what you want me to write my own book um what gives you the trust that i <laughs> the yeah. confidence that i can do it's, that i can do something like that you've, you've um, written enough books and you've also like you know how to tell a story that's the that's in in the beauty and in you know Mark with children's books is that you can make it worthless, right? Yep. You just need to tell a story. You're writing for some people that can read yet. Um, you just need to do something that is that is impactful, relevant, uh, important today without being preachy uh, or just a funny book. I mean, it could be anything, right? Um, but important to kids. Yep. And that to me, I take with all this seriousness in the world and that's probably why it has taken me a while um but but we'll 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 see where it goes i'm really excited about it and i'm actually writing because you know there's an editor that trusted me and say hey let's start working on a project together now and kind of put fire under my butt to start working on it and it, it, it's it's kind of the best thing i mean i i like I've I've written a couple, but it was so long ago that I'm I'm still trying to get back in the writing game, and it is such a hard process, especially for and I as I imagine the same for you. Like drawing and making artwork now has become so sort of I don't want to say it's mindless because I don't think that's truthful, but like the the challenge is a very different type of challenge. My challenge is not about like how to compose a piece or 
sort of de to define who I am as an artist, but there's, there's other things I'm trying to accomplish, but writing, I'm like back to square one. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know if I know how to make a good sentence. Uh, and I don't know if, you know, like it's, it's so fundamental at this point of like, okay, wait, which one's See, the but verb? At that point, at that point, you can, you can rely on people to, that, that you can work with. Oh yeah. Um, are... what's, in, what's important is that you have something to say yeah. and, um, you know, a good premise of a story and, um, something that is gonna tickle the senses of, <laughs> of, of parents and children alike and and that it's appealing and that's um, hopefully unique or you know there's so many other attributes rather than just to have it perfectly written um well it's like the equivalent of like uh, you know all the books i've worked on have had a lot of narrative uh that i wrote previously and even the stuff i mean obviously the stuff that got published did but the, even the stuff that uh, didn't were always narrative and i realized sort of like I want to be a concept person with my writing and be weird. And that's where like those right. chronicle books, that high five book, like that's, that has a narrative in it, but it's really about like just high fives. Right. <laughs> like, I, I, well, I, you're already thinking differently, right? Yeah. You're already approaching the book with a different perspective. And yeah. that's already helpful because that makes your book unique next to the ocean of books that are out there. Um, um, so I, have, I just realized I have not been looking at the questions at all all night. <laughs> this happens sometimes when I get really engaged in the conversation. I just like, I totally zone out and am making and talking and don't look at questions, but I want to, there's someone that I think this is probably a question for you because I don't know as I could answer this one. Okay. Um, but Courtney design things says any, adv any advice on when you make illustrations digitally, how do you make them feel not, not feel digital? Or how do you give them that hand quality? Like obviously, you know, having the right brush. So like some of the brushes you use have that sort of like pencil like texture or a painter brush sort of feel to it. But your work doesn't register immediately as like, wow, you just you just whipped out Illustrator and and you love your vectors. Um, how do you get that feel of sort of like that natural feel to your work? I, I well, I think it's very hard to do it with. Um with uh, vector-based yes. illustration uh, <laughs> programs, you know, I used, and, and, you know, going back to being old, and it's funny that we keep getting into this, but, but um, I, when I first started as an illustrator, I worked in illustrator simply because it was the easiest way to send work to my clients. There was not a chance I could put in a little zip disk, um, a huge, Photoshop file without, you know, making them suffer trying to open it or whatever. So I was just sending everything in Illustrator. Um, and that's how I started. Did my work look cold and, um, and perhaps a little bit too more, more like a piece of design than a piece of illustration? Perhaps. I don't know. But little by little, I started realizing, you know, I'm building shapes here instead of actually illustrating. I'm not doing this, right? To the shape in Illustrator, you have to put together some wacky points and then try to mimic the texture. And it's, 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 a, it's a cumbersome thing. It's not, it's definitely not natural and it needs any, and it is not illustrating. So, yeah. so I needed to find something that it was a little closer. And I started playing with Photoshop just out of curiosity let's see what you know what I can get and you feel so lame in the beginning like oh this is so hard you know <laughs> uh, learning a new program whatever um, but little by little you get you, you know how to use it and then uh, okay now it's a tool now now I learn it now I know that if I take you know through to draw this little um, drumstick and make it look like it's in motion um, that doesn't take much, but the, the, the more crooked that I make it, the, the less perfect, or maybe I draw it, you know, if, if, if just it's about to hit the symbol or I'm having repetitive ones, you know, they start having um, some notion of animation in there. Um, that brings it to something that is more organic and starts looking softer. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question exactly. I know that, you know, you look at this frog, for instance, you might say, oh, well, yeah, that was done in the computer for the people that know um, applications like Photoshop, Procreate, yeah. that you can get this kind of textures, that you can get this kind of masking, um, but that also mimics some kind of printing process, right? I know about printing because I'm a graphic designer, so you know that, uh, um, silk screen and other kinds of prints would give you something like that. That you know, if I have a if I have a, um, a brush that mimics um, gouache, I'm gonna get a softer looking hat with softer edges. Um, and and a lot has to depends on what the project is about, what you what if you know what the tools can do for you. Um, um, what kind of brush works better for certain things? Just it requires, I would say, a lot of exploration. But um, also, I'm not doing anything different here other than drawing the same way I would draw on a piece of paper with paint, in a way, right? Yep. yep. So no, it's so there's a lot of things right there that immediately makes make the work somehow organic. Of course, you know, this is not a gouache painting. This is a digitally illustrated jumping frog and it's going to show but the, i'm okay with that i mean one of the things uh, i'm wondering were you of the era and and when i was when i was going through school and whatnot it was there were so many drastic changes in photoshop and illustrator that uh, i'm not saying the teachers didn't know how to use them but there was, definitely was a a learning curve for everybody that was involved uh, oh, the, at the time, yeah. Were you of that era where it was like, uh, you just got to push the buttons and figure out what happens? Oh, uh, a little bit older than that. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. my teachers, my teachers, uh, teachers didn't know. You know, I went to school and it was the beginning of computers. They were so basic that nobody would touch them. It was still a, too yeah. abstract. Yeah. It took me until I would say, um, as soon as I finish um, my career as a graphic designer, I, I worked at advertising agencies. They had the best computers immediately right away. I played with them a little bit, but it wasn't my thing. Um, it took until I moved to New York. When I moved to New York, I immediately had to jump on the computer and learn Illustrator and, and the basic things of Photoshop and always, and also design programs. Um, and, was there, and, so, it, but, but was it a lot of just like, literally pushing buttons and trying to figure out yes. on a daily basis like uh yeah. this does it and i mean i'm yeah i was of the same boat and maybe you know a little bit behind you in the sense of of era but i definitely feel like there was a lot of just hope and pray <laughs> that, oh, yeah that they and hope and pray that it's not going to crash hope and pray that it's you know it's going to work but you know even back when i started because i had to run and and uh, behind uh, to try to catch the FedEx truck <laughs> yeah. to send the disc with my illustration. There was also, you know, pray that it's not going to get destroyed in the way to the client. Um, I love and I'm I... talking, this is the year, what, 98, 99? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Changes I love... have happened quite drastically, quite rapidly. And it's also, you know, 20 years later, 24 years later. I was gonna say, I love that when I teach students about um, sort of illustration work now, and I, I teach a professional practice class and we go through contracts, it still has stuff like bike messengers mm. in the mm. contracts. And like, it feels, I mean, obviously like in certain locations that is still a, a viable thing, but most people just send their work digitally now and it's it's done. But it's just so funny to think of like, yeah, when you said chasing after a FedEx truck, or uh, oh my. at one point you said zip drives and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Like, yeah. I mean, that was a, that was a concern of like, <laughs> you literally could put an illustration on a, I remember having a zip drive that my illustration was the entire zip drive um, because it just didn't have that much storage. Is it gonna make it? it yeah, no, it's, like, it was rough. Um, <laughs> I'll send you the bottom half on one zip drive and the top half on another. And, yeah, that was that was the reason I I couldn't handle that. That's what that's why I was doing everything in in um, in Illustrator. Yeah. Then I realized what am I doing? I really need to 
put my 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 stamp here, my voice. Some something has to show that I'm drawing by hand, and I was and I was desperately in. Uh, this must be around the year 2003 or so, kind of a crisis. I need to stop this illustrator thing. I can't use it anymore. Yep. <laughs> um, I became, you know, I became really prolific at using it. But what was the point? I'm like, I'm not having fun with this. Um, do you now? Do you use it still, of any sort? Like, are there any projects that you ever use it for? Or is no, it... not really. No, rarely. I need to do something that involves the use of Illustrator, but it's yeah. rare. It's not, it's not a thing. Oh, I just vocal fry big time. I just said rare. That's not <laughs> how I speak. Um, yeah, no, totally. Uh, just, just don't use it. It's, it's all Photoshop and a little bit of um, Procreate sometimes or, but not what really, it's, ma it's mainly Photoshop. I'm lying, <laughs> such a liar. It's all Photoshop. Well, there's a reason I ask is like I still use Illustrator quite often one for teaching purposes but also for like if I need to drop an invoice or something of the sort oh yeah uh, well like, uh, okay let's say <laughs> let's say that for an invoice I okay think. but okay okay so but, not, but eh, that is so simple there's already a template I have that done yeah. and it's not that do it that I do it very often yeah I mean, um, I'm not in there like constantly getting out those uh, Bezier curves going like I gotta remake some image but I do use it for design purposes like that, like, you know, invoices, or if I need to make a little spreadsheet of uh, uh, like pricing or things of that sort, it'll right. show up automatically. But... but that's not really designing or yeah. illustrating, right? No, that's not, not illustrating proper. And that's why I'm just, it's one of those things where like some people are so closed off to it um, because it is a, it is a hard pro or a, a program to learn. Yeah. Honestly, that is, very challenging program. If you can't wrap your head around how that thing works, right? Um, no, and nightmare. You know, I was I was such a geek about learning it the right way that in the beginning I was, you know, every time there was an upgrade, I would read the entire thing again, and just you know, I didn't want to miss a, a a single new thing just to know what the program program was going to give me. Yeah, and that was fine back then, but you know, done with that. Let's just have fun and draw again. Yep. No, it's, it's, uh, I've had this theory for years and I've said it on here a few times. And so if anybody's heard this, uh, just tune out for a second, but that everybody kind of goes back to their roots at some point in their life, mm. like the equivalent of, uh, if, you know, a heavy metal rocker might go back to sort of, uh, blues or something of the sort at some point and go like, I got to get back into the sort of the, the beginning of it all. And I feel right. like as artists in a way, there's a time where like, you may be digital, for for a majority of your career but then at some point you might go you know what i got to get a canvas back out at some point and just right. butts around with a canvas uh, and something calls you yeah. yeah i mean i don't i don't i don't um what's the word i don't romanticize with all the hard things about design in the past how difficult it was to use certain um materials um or or the way we worked yeah um making comps and such but um, but definitely when it comes to art and expression, um, do whatever is calling you. Yep. And 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 if it's digital or if it's you know whatever it is. Do you? Right. Do you? I'm I'm glad I I'm working in in Photoshop this way. It just makes me very happy. So it's just when you make work, are you uh, actively trying to be happy with your work, or do you like do you like the pressure of like the challenge? <laughs> way? Um, no, that makes no I, I, I have to be having fun with it. I, yeah. I guess that's part of the struggle. If it's not fun, then why bother? Because I, I do know a few people that like, they really like to be challenged. And I'm not saying that it's not challenging to be when you're doing fun stuff, but like some people like to, to really fight against their artwork. And then there's some people like myself who's like, if I can make myself giggle, then I'm good. I'm good. Yes. Yeah. Same, same here. I mean, there's. Don't get me wrong, there are certain things that if I don't get, I'm gonna be working on it constantly. I'm gonna repeat it until until I get what I want because the story, the book, whatever it is, demands I do it the right way. You know, going back to where is this gonna end up in the hands of children? Okay, I better step up and do something. 
step up my game and do something that is that is to that level. Uh, but sometimes it's just to satisfy me, satisfy me because I, I wake up in the morning, I come here, open the door of the studio and immediately open the file that I was working on and feel like, ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> I nailed that thing. You know, it has to give you that sense of pleasure, at least for me. Where, where like is this, your studio? This basketball just gave me so much pleasure. Uh, you know what's getting me on those is those socks. <laughs> Those the stock feet, like that, tube the, socks. Yeah, the length of the 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 foot compared to sort of the the skinniness of the rest of it. Like, uh, is there is there a um, a thing that you draw over and over? Like for me, there are certain characters, or, or not necessarily like the same character, but a certain type of character that I tend to lean on, just because it feels fun or comfortable or what have you. Is there something that you're just like? If you were given the choice, you would just draw till the end of time? Well, just because it happens naturally, you know, what I, I was just drawing something um, just a minute ago down here, this, this um, sort of profile faces, you know, silhouettes. Yeah. Yeah, profiles. Um, those just kind of fall off your hand when you're on the telephone, when you're talking with somebody, it's just like when you're sketching in a, at a coffee shop. It's kind of the easiest thing to, you know, the forehead line, zip, the, the mouth, the face, um, those happen often, but in terms of preference of what to draw, um, frogs, um, <laughs> basketball players, no, just kidding. Uh, I would say bikes, musicians. I love drawing instruments. I, I play drums, not really well, but I play drums. Um, so I know that drums fit quite well. Yeah, I love what? to love to draw it and um animals nature lately i've been doing some venturing into some kind of backgrounds um some, some i don't know which drum mountains sky snow stuff like that wait, wait but, hey, drums what kind of drums are we playing what kind of drums this one in particular well i more so like uh um style style of of music are you playing um i play they just, you know, pure rock, raw, awful when I was younger. Um, and I moved to, I always kept, you know, congas or something around, um, some Latin rhythms. Again, not great. Um, and just not long ago, a couple of years ago, I was part of a group here that played, you know, a way mellower music, um, more like indie, indie rock and um that was that was a good thing to go back to the drum set and develop another part of being a creative person yeah through something that it's definitely um takes me out of my comfort zone because this group had a violinist had a great guitar player um it was definitely definitely something a, a big challenge and it was it was fun to to try it out did uh uh, <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Did your Go more. skill set at drums in any way relate to your artistic talents in the sense of like, you know, like a, 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 I'm someone, if you give me drums, I can put down a little tiny beat, but if you ask me to include my feet in it, you know, like I can, I can play with like, my hands, right? <laughs> You asked me to put my feet into the equation and it turns into a nightmare because I just can't my I'm as as white as they come when it comes to uh, to rhythm. <laughs> uh, I am. I don't have that skill. Um, but there's some people who like, you know, they, they have those skills and they translate to other things in their life as far as like, you know, I look at something like the equivalent of, of the color in your work. Are you someone who plays drums in a way that would be described as colorful? Or are you someone who plays in a way that is more artistic versus sort of like technical? I, I would say so, although I never got to that level of, of, of you know, perfection as a drummer. I'm still super basic and I don't think I'm going to learn anything newer <laughs> at this point. Otherwise, it would require more time and, and attention that I, that I actually have. Um, but I, there's, you know, there's the other kind of connection between music and, and drawing. I mean, I have to have music on 
all day long. Otherwise, I can't draw. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't. I can't work. And sometimes, you know, the music takes over, and I do. I'm one of those that likes to dance alone i don't care if it's a good <laughs> song i it goes super loud and i have a couple of you know drumsticks here next to me and i start banging on things so i jump around and i and i dance because because he has to happen <laughs> I, I love i love the way that you said that in particular like sometimes i have to dance i don't care like it was just, <laughs> like you're, you're already did, ready to defend yourself as if i'm gonna challenge it right then and there you feel like it yeah, defending yourself in front of a teacher and i don't care that's what i'd like to do so i'm gonna do it <laughs> you can't stop me you can You're in Boston, stop me man. i'm already there i'm doing it <laughs> i'm moving my feet yeah it's i would say something like that it's just you you you, you can't help it you know if my neighbors see me uh well too bad for them <laughs> yeah. actually actually yeah congratulations to them because they got to see you dancing and Oh man, <laughs> I don't know how good that is. <laughs> I imagine it's it's a, a wonderful display. If it's anything like the rhythm that I have, boy oh boy. Oh, oh come on. Hey, but uh, returning the question to you, what do you like to draw? I haven't asked you many questions. Oh, I realize. Uh, I, you don't have to, get... admit, but um, what do I like to draw? Okay, yeah, so what's, you talk... what's the thing that happens naturally when you start drawing? Uh, the shape of the frog that I'm drawing right now. I like to draw ovals that lean to the right. And so anything that allows me to draw that shape, I lean on. Um, but mm. I, would, I would even venture to say one of the things that you said that like, you know, you're just drawing in a sketchbook, there's one shape in particular, I don't even know what the symbol is called. It's on a, on a keyboard and it's not yeah. a parentheses, but it's the one that, it's a parentheses with the little point in the center that comes to the back or. Yep, yeah, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Is, I, I draw that all the time and like if I draw it on a piece of paper, it's a face to me every time. The it is a face. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the profile I was um, talking to you before. Yeah, and it's it's that, that same thing that you yep. mentioned that and I'm like, that's a shape that shows up when I'm in meetings all the time. Well, it's this, I'm, this guy over here, yeah, you know? Yeah, I'm drawing that same shape regularly <laughs> in things and it's a, it, it is a go-to like symbol. Yeah, yeah, you have, right. it on, you have it on that figure and it's a, uh, it's just yeah. something I gravitate towards, and I, I have never used it in a piece yet um, because I'm just trying to find the right spot to use it, but that does show up really? all the time. Huh. For me, it's, uh, it's probably in every book. You know, every single kid that I've drawn probably has the same, a very similar kind of profile. Yeah. yeah. Is there, so like, one of the I things... Love, I, you know, we were talking to, with my friend Mike, the other day Micah player yeah. and we were talking about this part of the head that you know the back of the neck how much fun to draw it when, when you know once you get it you know during a kind of 1950s kid yeah yeah that that like I was one of the things I was drawing the other day for a book that I'm trying to write is the back of a or is about it has a shoe in it and the back of a heel and like the tramp oh yeah into oh. heel like that's a really this is a weird state. I was gonna say that's a really seductive curve, and <laughs> I, I don't mean to use seductive in a like a, a gross way or a creepy true, way. But at the same time, in the same sense, yeah. <laughs> there is a reputation going around with students. Careful what you're saying. <laughs> there's, there's, I've said stuff. I've written multiple. <laughs> I've written multiple dummy books about shoes or feet, and I don't have a. I don't think I have a fetish, but it shows up too often. <laughs> and it's built a reputation, but I think shoes are cool. And so I draw shoes. Shoes are super cool. <laughs> Did you ever see the shoes that Andy Warhol drew as an illustrator? When, well, back when he was an illustrator. I, I remember seeing, I, I can't draw, like I remember that vaguely pops into my head, but I can't remember exactly sort of the look that goes with it. But man, uh, that, let me see if I can, let me see if I can attempt. It was, you know, women's shoes that go kind of like this. Oh. No, I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> Something like, like this. Let's see. Did I do it? Yeah, I don't know. Definitely more. Definitely more delicate. I yeah, didn't yeah, get yeah. it. It's like it's got a bit of a like a, a '50s sort of right. like femme fatale. I mean, those shoes that he drew were insane, and I don't have foot fetish either. But his shoes, <laughs> or the you know the front of the 
of a 1950s fashion catalog. It would be something like this. Ugh. And the shoes, and the shoe is actually shorter. I mean, shoes I are shoes are hard to draw. I know that people say like feet and hands, but honestly, like it makes me have appreciation for people like people who can draw like that work in uh, automotive design. Yeah. They draw um, uh, really nice cars and people who can draw a really good shoe uh, and get the curves just right. It's the same thing as like that little foot on the cyclist that you drew right. or the, the gliding of the character. Like if you get it just right, it's really noticeable. And if you get it just wrong, it's also really noticeable. Right. Um, that's uh, yeah, like drawing the front of a foot. I, I, or like the, the, the hard one that I always think like if someone can really draw it is a finger pointed at you at camera and the forced perspective that comes with that. Whew. You know, there's, there's no fun in drawing that at all. No. So <laughs> might as well do, you got to find something, you know, around that because that's not a nice yeah. thing to draw. No, it's, it's, they're always pointing a little bit at an angle or something of the sort, just to make it a little bit easier on, on the process. Yes. I mean, that would be, I mean, you've heard the, you've heard the drawing a, um, a horse on a bicycle business, I assume, where it's like, that's one of the hardest things to draw as an illustrator is a horse on a bicycle. Well, just the horse or a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now you, I, you could add in a horse on a bicycle with human hands pointing directly at camera. We're going to do that right away with, <laughs> yeah, that's, with, with some, that's, with some weird shoes. You want to, you want to impress me tonight. That's what you got to do. That's the one. Um, you know, it's it's the world of illustration. We can go as cartoony as we want. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that's that is why I like playing in the world that I'm in. Is like nope. I mentioned that before. But nobody's, nobody's going to stop us. Okay. Yeah. I don't have to reference the... at this point. Right. Exactly. It could, I horses. Could, a big. They would be riding the. They would be riding with really stiff forearms. I'm just. I'm watching. Yeah. How much, how much hind leg? Because their legs go the other direction, though. But I guess the you back. can be car It doesn't matter. The back. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, right? Yep. Make him do whatever. It's however we want for the night. Actually, I, I love drawing horses. <laughs> but this one on a bike, I mean, come on. We're pushing the limits of imagination at this point. Dang, that's pretty good. Dang. Um, now I'm, I'm just sitting here watching you draw a horse on <laughs> I noticed you're not drawing the bike because that's the tough part for you. I got you. I got you. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it happens. I don't know, Mark. Ge <laughs> geometry at this point might defeat us. <laughs> and we might not be able to get it. Oh, it's happening. It's ha happening. It's happening. Like... Am I going to be in the news or something like that? This is, this is newsworthy. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the Times and, and let them know. Yep. Uh, I'll run over there with a, a zip disk of this illustration. <laughs> so I can okay. polish it tomorrow. They're, they're gonna, this they're gonna ask you to get the illustration ready by first thing in the morning, so you better be on top of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. See now that horsetail is that thing is gonna get caught in those spokes. It's so close to that wheel. <laughs> right, well let's 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 help this poor horse over here. He needs, he needs needs that tail like pointed up or he needs a little mud flap thing that you can put on those bikes yeah to to prevent some sort of uh tragedy he just needs he just needs to go faster so yeah. that doesn't happen <laughs> the speed factor yeah. the speed factor would save your tail i wonder if like what's more complicated than a bike there's got to be something else that they could ride motorcycle be motor Motorcycle is pretty good. I'm trying to think of like, what a tr is a tricycle more complicated than a bicycle just because it has three wheels or is that easier because there's no gears? I think we're asking very silly questions <laughs> right now. <laughs> See, this is, this is, as you stay later, we start getting more messed up. I'm, I'm running on lack of sleep and it's going to get weirder and weirder as the night goes on. Um, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit like, so we talked about things that you love to draw. But yeah. what are the things that you personally hate? What's the thing that, like, if you got it in an assignment, you're like, Ugh, I'm uh, going to do it. But uh, um, things, things that don't have a particular shape, like 
let's say that they can be many, many things mm. and usually they're pretty generic like a dresser you know okay. utilitarian stuff that is just ugh, no personality um you know we all tend to draw the same kind of if there's a little closet people go with the old-fashioned way with the legs in certain way with those little curvy thingies um but there's nothing beyond that unless you draw something modern and that probably has nicer legs kind of pointy kind of 1960s groovier uh that would be more fun but um but yeah utilitarian st stuff like that like interior scenes for me sometimes are i struggle with they're not that much fun yeah. having to draw you know i you know the one lamp <laughs> the one that gets me like yeah. a lamp me because it's a shape but the one that gets me is when it's a, a um a ambiguous shape in the sense of like a bowl of oatmeal the bowl is easy to draw right the oatmeal is hard because it can be anything and especially if it doesn't have like like oatmeal doesn't have a lot of like interesting textures to play with or That's true. or like you know it doesn't end up being like um like if it was stew you could put like bits and pieces in it but oatmeal is is ambiguous yeah, mushy, mushy yeah. stuff yeah no i i hear you that is super hard those those yeah. are the things that i'm like i'm a little hesitant whenever i uh <laughs> whenever i see those as do a, not write a book about oatmeal yeah <laughs> i was i've already written it and i just don't know how to draw it um <laughs> no i've i've written multiple about shoes instead um it's it's so bad i like i i'm not helping my cause by talking about shoes and feet so often um i'm gonna i'm gonna never live that down for the rest of my life oh, it's just um, a, it's fun to draw the, the challenge is i had a student years ago who um i don't do you know what it, i think it's called a chibi it's like a type of character a little like sort of big-headed character they drew this character and it had these weird feet and I, they were in high heels. And I, at one point I said like, I got to see what those feet actually look like because they right. didn't make sense to me. But me saying that all of a sudden it was, oh, Mark's like, Mark likes feet. And he wants to see those feet and just <laughs> stop. And then that spread to the next year. And now I'm just known as a foot person. And it, <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had never made that, that just one that question, comment. Yeah. Literally just a, design question of like oh i wonder what shape that would be and now i'm i'm the creep um <laughs> and now i put it up we, in this and now i'm gonna you know I yeah need to stop talking about it i need to stop yep. talking about it <laughs> you're you're sinking deeper no. um <laughs> careful careful what you say yes i don't need to see it i, I it doesn't matter to me anymore i don't care <laughs> <laughs> you know what i don't care i'm just yep. doing it mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. you can't stop me I, I really, it's not important at all in my life. And I'm just going to cry later tonight because I, I still don't understand. How it so works. here's the point about um, the things that you enjoy, how to draw. You yeah. probably do because you know them by heart, right? Yeah. So it's fun to, make, uh, to, to, make sense. to mention something that we haven't talked about here that I'd like to mention. It's um, observation. Okay how important it is to just constantly pay attention and recording things because you know you don't always i mean nowadays you do you can you can take a photo of something um but if you memorize it and um you later draw it in your studio then you're gonna draw whatever you mind your mind remember from that element that you wanted to um to remember it's 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 with would help with the personality of your drawing yeah like I, so, i'm the type of person who will reference things but only like I, I i agree with you in the sense of like observation is important documenting or having to look at something in order to draw it is not always the same for me so like i would love going to the zoo and seeing animals but i don't want to go take pictures and bring them home and put the picture in front of me and draw exactly from the picture mm -hmm. No. Yeah, that's the that's why it gets risky for me because then I all of a sudden I start to go okay I gotta match the picture exactly. Oh yeah, no, that's that's always horrible. That's not 
that's never helpful. <laughs> yeah, that's copy. Yeah, going going too close to the reference is hard. But you know, sometimes you can avoid it. Sometimes yep. it's something, you know, a bicycle, if you don't get that, you know, where that bottom bracket goes or whatever it is that needs to be exact, if you don't know it, or if you don't look at the reference, then it's gonna come off and, and um, you know, it might have some charm, but it really, well, depends on the project, yeah. right? Um, that, that might be all, all you need to do, uh, that kind of charm. But, but other other times, like with Major Taylor, I was stuck drawing the 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 story of a character, and I needed to be accurate for children to understand it. So, so I have, I have the a, reference needed to be right. I have a technical question for you. You called it yes. a bottom bracket. Is that actually what it's called? Damn, sorry, I got geeky right well, there no, for a second. The reason why I asked is I was expecting you to pull out something like really like complicated for it. So I was expecting it to be like the, you know, the the uh, Steinman uh, yeah. trans something. The speedful. Like some really com complicated thing, but it's no, it's just a bottom bracket. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the bottom bracket. Yeah. Yeah. It was right. made by engineers. Those are simple people. <laughs> <laughs> This is, uh, yeah. Don't ever let it, don't ever let her, ever let them hear you say that though. Yeah, let's not call them simple. Let's just call them, you know, yeah. smart, um, efficient, efficient. <laughs> um, why bother with nonsense names, <laughs> stuff like that. Yes. This is uh, uh, I I feel like this conversation has devolved in a way that I like. Uh, or now we're like talking about just random stuff and. This is like my favorite part of these evenings where we start to talk about just things. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't even, it doesn't even have to like make any sense about illustration whatsoever. And yeah. I'm sure there's people that have been going like, I tuned in to find out, find out about like, what is, what is the brush that you use? And what is the, but no, now it's just yeah. engineers are simple people. Um, right. And it's, yeah. And it's not going to happen that we're going to talk about the perfect brush and all, because I think at that point, you know, it has, happens with making creating creating content and making videos about this the idea is that we don't all need to look the same and draw the same way or yeah i get, get it you know there's trends out there and you kind of want to be a part of certain movement or you know yeah all these brushes are so cool right now everybody's using them but you gotta allow yourself to you know, have the time with those tools, learn which one is the one that works for you, use it, uh, so play with it, and, and create your own, it's your own path. So let me ask you a question that's sort of tangential to that then. Who are yes. thinking about the idea of, of, we all have our heroes, and obviously- Oh, that's, that's look, sorry, I need to interrupt. That's looking pretty cool, oh, man. Oh, thank, oh. You. thank you. We're, we're getting there, I'm trying to add a crowd. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to make him feel like he's like that old rat pack thing, but I'll get there eventually. Um, give him a Sammy Davis, like the single eye or something of the sort. Um, so thinking about that idea of like, um, uh, shoot, I just lost it. But wait, then let me keep complimenting what you're doing. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, I lost I love, the rest I, of the night. You know, the, the roughness or the, this kind of, there's there's something about collage that is so approachable that it's just very easy to connect as a, as you know as your audience but it also you know carries such a strong um aesthetic uh, um how can i define that like like like, like it's, it's really strong graphically um there's no in betweens. There's so everything gets defined by where where the seats are cut. Yeah, and and, and those, those edges, as rough as they are, they're awesome. That's why I, I've switched to because I used to do purely paint, and I was trying to not necessarily mimic collage, but I was it, I was trying to maintain irregular edges, and like it was it, you talked about that sort of the ease of some of the the process and and making, and that's where that really came from me is like. The more easy it is, uh, the not necessarily the easier it is, but it just it cut out the middleman of like trying yeah. to mimic what the scissor was going to do. And so like this has been a, a 
probably the most dramatic and life-changing artistic shift that I have made is switching to the collage because of, of these stupid scissors, these Fisker scissors. And if Fisker's watching, you can pay me money for promoting it, but these Fisker shears are uh, my lifeblood at this point. Um, yes, the, those are really beautiful scissors. Yeah, there. yeah. These are my here. They're gorgeous. But I don't use them as often. I use them sometimes for sketches, but I mean, the way you uh, manipulate paper for, for final illustration, for final work is amazing. I like this idea of I don't ask questions and you just compliment me for the rest of the Do show keep if you're okay. Going? Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Look yeah. at those soft hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're not soft. They're covered in glue right now. What was I going to say? Um, oh, I know, I know what I was going to ask you. Um, so we all have our influences and we're all, you know, uh, caught up in, uh, I look at this person and I love the work that they do and I really want to be like them. And then all of a sudden we're mimicking them mm -hmm. or we're getting too close to theirs. And obviously that happens to every artist at some point in their career, they get a little too close to their heroes. Um, but who are some of the heroes that you have that potentially we wouldn't see the influence but are there you know like um, maybe that's not kid lit related maybe that's not art related but are there people that you look at and you're like this person is in my work but not everybody is going to see it on a regular basis mm hmm okay so graphic designers like um paul rand yep because of simplicity because of the the uh, balance that he brought between the content and the and the and the form it's important to me i, I keep it in mind all the time uh yeah. so he's super relevant um in terms of aesthetics i would say ben sean okay has a level of, of looseness that i want to achieve one day or have when i have let's say i can draw that way but very similarly but I don't have the confidence to put it out there. There's a part of me that as a graphic designer, I kind of look for some form of some sort of perfection. And I don't know if I'm expressing myself correctly, but um, you know, Ben Sean might draw a hand that looks like, you know, kind of twisted, but it has, it has the shape of something. I, I don't have the freedom to go there and do that yet. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it'll happen at some point. But um, um, who else? I mean, illustrators from the the, the children's books in the 50s, like uh, Aurelius Battaglia, obviously the Provincians, um, the obvious, you know, the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. um, who else would that be in that? Oh, Sasek, obviously. Yes. Um, oh, I got a bunch of his books in the... In my shelf and i don't know as a lot of people know his work but his work is so good right so good incredible um it is and a lot of comic books you know i'd read comic books but not superhero comic books more european comic books i have a ton those have influenced uh probably this yeah um the movement the movement in my work right that comes from that comes from them um french comic books the the clean line movement of the 80s that was huge for me mostly when i first started and i kind of wanted my illustrate the lines that i did in illustrator kind of wanted to mimic that clean line okay it was just way too clean and too perfect so it missed a lot of the flavor that's why um, i needed to go back and do to draw by hand again the um yeah i'm trying to think of like there's what's one of the folks that are you into the the golden books because mm -hmm. that's got that same like, like not necessarily it's it's the same as some of the like uh the folks that you're talking about but there is a different type of illustration of that era right uh, but you know Bataglia there are a lot of those yeah um, the, um, the, the, um, early, the early golden books because obviously they're still being made right but those, those early ones are just so beautiful and like um they're gorgeous and i you know, sadly, the cutout images with white background, all that stuff works really well for me, and, and I still use it. Yeah, um, I have evolved in, in my own journey and created what I needed to create. Uh, sometimes illustrating that way doesn't, you know, exactly like that. Probably one of the, 
this first book that I show you, the one from Colombia, has a lot of that. Um, let me see if I can find a page that looks kind of golden booky. Um, <laughs> uh, I all of them. Say golden booky, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Like there is a you know, like this kind of stuff. Yeah. But this one had a, a party of these cats throw an enormous party, and I just threw other things like you know, like a. Um, mirror ball or the record player, some speakers and some other elements that are, you know, a little bit more newer than, than from that era. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that was kind of the, the whole beginning when I first started with, with picture books, those, those fellas. It's, I mean, it's even I, I admire the work of a lot of illustrators um, that are alive today. I would never <laughs> copy them. It just doesn't just doesn't work for me. Just I can't. Is it? Is it a? Uh, and and I don't disagree with that. And uh, it's an ethical thing. Yeah, I was wondering, is it a, is it a moral ethical thing or is it a a sort of absolutely style? absolutely. I mean, their influence is gonna sip in one way or another, but. Uh, I have to internalize it and I have to create my own stuff. It's yeah. great to see what they're doing. I don't need to be doing what they're doing. Um, that's, that's, their, that's their own process and I should concentrate on mine. Yep. No, it makes total sense. I'm, uh, it's always this, this challenge, at least in my mind, of like, where is that threshold of um, not just... Um, like influence, but uh, how do I pull, how do I look at something without uh, being subconsciously or, or like, you know, without my knowledge being influenced by them. And there's, there's part of me that tends to try to stay away from looking at too much art because right. of that in particular, because I'm afraid, not necessarily that I'm, I'm going to like totally uh, ruin it and, uh, uh, get too close, but I think just even the principle of like, the more I stay away, the more I'm living in a world that just feels natural to me, and I'm not trying to mimic sure. other folks. And so, like a lot of the artists that I look at, like I don't look at a lot of collage artists of any sort. That's not my um, my go to, and I don't look at a lot of um, uh, sort of I don't know, like. I wanted to call it like a little bit art brute or a little bit mm -hmm. sort of uh, naive or, or something of the sort. Like that's not always the aesthetic that I go for when I look at work. Most of the time I'm looking at stuff that is, um, if it's artwork, a lot of times it's stuff that's like not even illustrative. Um, right. That I, I try to separate that out or I try to like remove that out of the equation. So I'm looking at things that are like completely separated. So I don't even run that risk. Um, yeah. Are there are there things? I mean, I, I I don't feel like I'm looking for that anymore. I mean, it it it, it probably stopped some years ago, some good good years ago. Yeah. That I would look at work with that with that in mind, like, oh, look at this. I need to learn how to draw that. Just and the way this person is doing it is helping me. No, I'm I I pass that that stage. Yeah. But you know, I do look at the work of of people that um that I consider are doing great things simply because it helps me push, it helps me push further up, you know, and not get comfortable with what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so in a way that's, that's the, that's the influence I get from their work. Is there, um, are there people outside of, of art that were influential? Like obviously, and it may be not outside of art, but people that are not, uh, in the same sort of career, like they call them like teachers. Are there people that sort of have been super influential or people in your family or life that have really sort of inspired a lot of the artwork or the, the process of making for you? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just no one. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. I would say um, no. Uh, when my kids were still living here, um, I bombarded them with information about design, illustration, you name it, video, um, everything. 
So when they were here, there was this this back and forth of ideas all the time, and then and then, you know, I still you know, my oldest kid lives in 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 LA, and it's an animator, and my daughter is about to graduate from architectural school, and we look at things, we look at you know, we look at buildings, we look at movies, we look at things that are in interest to all of us. And um, that pushes my my creative spirit higher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there, uh, so they both have, wait, no, you said your, your, yeah, your son's in animation. They both have an artistic slant to their, uh, to their making at this point. Right. My oldest kid is a non-binary person. Um, name is Sasha and my daughter is Sophia. They're both super creative in their own way. One is definitely more about more of a storyteller. The other one is definitely much more heavily influenced by design. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's cool to see it that they have to develop their own, their own stuff, their own way, but highly creative, if I would say. Yeah. Is that, is that sort of a proud moment knowing that they sort of not necessarily followed in your footsteps, but that some creative <laughs> practice has come out of it for them? Um, well, in a way, and it also scares the hell out of me because I know how hard <laughs> it is to make it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I met my wife taking a class in graphic design. So it's not that just it, it's me doing all the all the influence yeah. in this household. Uh, she did she did a lot too she's she's um, the blame is that what you're saying <laughs> she's also to yeah, blame yeah. yeah um but um but i don't know i think that the 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 back and forth with with your own kids uh when it comes to creativity is pretty fulfilling yeah i mean it's it's uh, it's funny because my son is not uh he's creative but he's not creative in the same sense that we are like he's very creative in in music and mm -hmm. understands music but that's also very sort of math based and there's a structure to it right. so he would he would probably if you were going to go into something like i think he's going to be an engineer and it sort of ventures into that architect side where there's like there's certain rules you play by or there's a structure that it's built on and less of the like you know the world that we're in where it's maybe a little bit more subjective because we're not risking someone's life if we build a full right. not stable uh or sure. those kind of things but um, it is nice to see when he does do something super creative, like for Valentine's Day, he came up with a really creative idea of a project for people to do. His Valentine's gift was we like little silhouettes that we had to fill in with our own like colors and stuff. And, you know, it's creative in his own way. And that is rewarding as a, as a parent. Um, is the, 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 uh, the kid that you have that's doing animation, is it stuff that we would know? Um, yeah, Sasha has worked with a um, couple of shows. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention it, so I'm going to just uh, keep my mouth shut for now. <laughs> but um, yes, I'll, I'll send you links when, when we're done. Unfortunately, I can't mention it or, you know, or they're going to grill me later. Dad, you couldn't, we can't talk about that yet. It's um, Star Wars or... Uh, it's Star just... Wars. Or, no, it's... Um, we also collaborated in a project for a preschool show recently. Um, I was hired to the to design a segment of of this new show that is going to be out at some point soon. Um, and then I, you know, I immediately said, "Would it be okay if I work with my kid on this?" Mm -hmm. um, because we understand each other really well, and we can we can work this out um, much quicker and yeah. and. It's going to be, it's, it's also going to be a super fulfilling uh, thing to do for me. And they're like, yeah, sure, go for it. And it was a, wow. Oh, yeah. And man, what a wonderful collaboration. That felt awesome. You can, you can write them out of the will if, uh, if they do a bad job and make right. it look bad. And that's always a, exactly. a bonus. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's it. I have, I have a friend, uh, Susie Garamani, who does uh, picture books and does a lot of like uh, <clears throat> design work. And she just this week had a book come out that she illustrated her mother wrote and their agent is uh, Susie's sister and her mother's daughter. And so it's oh, like wow. a, a 
a, a family affair across the board that's with all of it. That, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, such a cool idea. Um, the problem is I need to find a family member that can do a good job writing. And then uh, <laughs> I just call on them out in the middle of this. Yeah. You know, if they finally yeah. get their act it, together and did something It might good. come out a little mathematical, yeah. but can you write me a story, please? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just ask my parents. Um, do you get do you get people all the time coming to you going, hey, I have an idea for a story? All, all the time. And have any yeah. been... I'm I'm not trying to be a jerk here, but have any of them like turned out to be anything as far as like good or is it? Do you even well, do you even bother? I mean, there can there can be wonderful stories. The problem is, you know, uh, it's it's the business aspect of it, yeah. and I can't work unless I get something directly from a publisher, and it's a book that is going to be published, and you know, it has a future, and that is going to help my career as well. So. There's a lot of things. I mean, it's really hard to, I don't know how to tell a person, you know, this, there, there's another way you need to go to sell your story, but you know, I, I can't, um, can't do it. I mean, I've, I've had people come to me and, and especially on the education side, they come to me saying like, would you or one of your students want to work on this? And oftentimes when I, right. the price range, um, I never hear from them again. Um, and it's not not because I'm being like right. asking for a million dollars, but a lot of times there is not knowledge of of what actually is required, right. or what the expectations are on an illustrator in that case. But um, that's correct. No, and I'm you know, fortunately I'm I'm booked for a while working on 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 books for, and, and it's just really hard to say. Yeah, I can carve sometimes to work on your story. It's just, it's just not feasible. It's yeah. Not possible. Yeah. Um, Mark, my dear friend. Oh yeah. We're like crazy past the time you said. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay. I think I need to yeah. go back to uh, real work. <laughs> hey, how dare you? How, how dare, dare you? <laughs> <laughs> this is work. work. No, this, this was like, you know, um, an extended period by the water cooler having fun. <laughs> 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 I love, I, I'm, it's funny you say that, and I'm like, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. We're just gossiping. Did you see? It's <laughs> gossiping by, by the water cooler, you know, uh, influence each other and talking about cool things. But, you know, there's there's some sketches that need to be finished for tomorrow. <laughs> but, but, but did you see what happens on Friends? Because last night, the Friends episode was so good. No, um, I, uh, no, this has been wonderful. This has been great. And I'm, I'm, I'm so honored that you took the time to sit with me and uh, illustrate and talk and to watch you make these characters and to sort of uh, just uh, sort of powerhouse through. Um, oh, man. Even, even the equivalent at the beginning, you said at some point, like, hey, uh, I realize I haven't been drawing, um, but then eventually it, it smooths out and you, uh, it's been wonderful. So I, uh, I appreciate Man, thank you, you the time. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. I thought of, you know, I know that I was nervous in the beginning, but I was, I don't do this very often. So it well, took me out of my comfort zone, which is always a good thing. I hope, I hope that it was rewarding and I hope that it, next time you have to do something of the sort, you're not, uh, you're not crying on the phone like you did to me earlier about how <laughs> awful this is going to be. <laughs> Just, I, thought uh, we, just, I thought we agreed oh, we, were, we weren't going to talk oh, about sorry, that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, uh, I, I will send you a box of tissues next time. Um, no, this has, been, this has been so good. And uh, again, I, I am a huge fan of your work. And to have you on uh, tonight was a dream come true. So, I th Man, you're super kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> Beautiful. I can't wait to, you got to finish that piece and post I it. Will. No, I, I will. I need to see it. I'm going to okay. tonight, but go get your work done. And I will awesome, be dude. All right. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Right. Corey Mitchell, I see that, the awkward. The joke is it's awkward. It's supposed to be awkward. Um, anyways, that was, uh, for, again, for those that don't know uh, or tuned in late, that was Leo Espinosa, uh, who illustrated stuff like Island Born and Like and uh no is all i know and uh the 
the world belongs to us, uh, and all these uh, amazing books, um, and has done a uh, uh, just a plethora of, of work that I'm uh, inspired by on a regular basis. And so if you don't know this work, get out there and check it out and get all of these uh, amazing books. And I'm going to continue painting for the night. Again, here, I'll show the other one here. Like, uh, I'm going to keep painting for the night and sort of uh, continuously go uh, until I'm done with this illustration. But again, Leo's work is uh, insanely good. Uh, and so get out there and, and check it all out. Um, if you have questions for me for the rest of the night, just throw them in that, uh, in that chat box. The, or not chat box, but the, the comments. Uh, and I will try to answer as I can. I know I didn't answer or we didn't get to as many questions as I generally try to. I kept forgetting to look up at the at the screen. Um, I realize this is like so far out right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in a little bit if I can. So you're you're not having to look at like the top of my head the whole time. Um, so I'm just drawing a frog kroner as as one does. Um, uh, because today is officially uh leap year day is it called is it called leap day or is it called leap year day is it just leap year like does this day actually have a title i don't know if someone want to inform me and say no this is how it works uh i'd be happy to know um but in the meantime i'm just going to sort of continuously work and if people want to throw out uh topics i'm more than happy to uh to chat if anybody is up to speed on um What's going on on Love is Blind? I'm more than happy to talk about that as well. And my wife would love to chat about that. My wife sent me something about some weird Willy Wonka thing that happened in Scotland uh, that I haven't had a chance to read yet. And we'll see if we can get that. Let's see. Uh, so it's called Leap Day Online. There we go. Thank you, Laura. Um, and uh, Selena uh, de Guzman uh, says, amazing talk. Thank you. Uh, but of course, this is wonderful. Um, so again, throw questions or anything of the sort, uh, Corey, I say leap day. Also fun fact, leap day is, is, is Superman's birthday. So Superman's like 12 <laughs> Superman, just Superman just hit his tween years. Uh, and he's, uh, uh, let's see. Let's talk about love is blind or the Wonka thing. Uh, see, the problem is I haven't seen the Wonka thing, so I don't know. I don't know how to talk about that right now. Um, Corey, since you're on here, I need to tell you something. Um, this is straight up uh, an apology. Uh, <laughs> now that I am I'm dumb and I'm able to talk to people on a regular basis uh, live and even when I was, now that I teach, I can get in front of a crowd and talk and I will forever uh, I will forever feel bad about there was that like I think it was a, a talent show or something of the sort that was at RISD and my brother was in town and I went out to dinner with him and like I know that at this point in my life I know that part of me like was just so afraid to go up on stage and now I can't shut up and uh, you you you, uh, you went out there and and i was nervous and whatnot and i will always feel bad about that but at the same time uh i wouldn't have been good on stage anyways at that point it would have been a mess <laughs> um this is called mark hoffman uh uh what do i want to call it um uh, admits failures i remember that i have a great memory <laughs> no apologies needed uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't even, I, I know that it was probably like a, a weird night for me in general. Um, but I know that a part of that, that whole college years, I didn't know that I was like a social anxiously, anxiously. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I didn't, at first of all, I said social, 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 no, I don't even know what I said. And then I said, ooh, ooh, instead of, uh, oh, um, and the full story of the college thing? No, Mrs. Hoppy, it's not really exciting. It's there was supposed to be a, a, a talent show and Corey and I were supposed to both host, but my brother was in town 
And so I ended up going out to dinner with my brother because it was the one night that he was there. Uh, and in a way I ditched Corey and I didn't, I, now I feel bad about it looking back on it. Um, and so that's it. That's the story. Nothing special, but Corey's on here. So he can tell you stories about me when I'm in college and he can relay horrible things, uh, about me. Um, things like, um, I'm trying to think of like bad movies. I've told people Corey on here. I think I've told someone, do you remember the day, assuming you're still listening, Corey, the day that we watched, uh, Theodore Rex and ate lemons. Wait, do I smell toast? Oh, yes. We were, uh, the other day, my wife was cooking toast, and I go, like, I thought it was burning. I was like, oh, I smell toast. And she made some joke about that as well. And then we were questioning, is that a real thing? Do you actually smell toast? Or is that just, like, some sort of comedic um, interpretation of, hey, if you were, if you were going to have a heart or a stroke or a heart attack or whatever it is that, just toast is the the joke now or is it really you actually smell toast it's the same thing as earlier that i said you know everybody says the it tastes like chicken um you know is that just because that's the joke i don't know i hope i hope none of us ever find out whether it really is toast or if it like if it is toast is it like a certain type of toasty smell? Because you can get like, you know, burnt toast or you can get just a toasty smell. Like, you know, a nice piece of cinnamon bread toasted smells great. But if you toast like, uh, I'm trying to think of what would be like a gross, but there's plenty of things I can go up to, but there's certain things that you toast, not so good, not so good. Uh, looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, I haven't drawn the eyes. I'm trying to figure out if I want to draw. Okay, so I will do that next uh, for Maggie Schaefer. Uh, I, I will get those eyes in there for you. Um, I've been hesitant because I'm trying to figure out if I want to make the eyes um, uh, closed or not. And so I'm trying to figure out sort of the, the, the concept. But here, I'll cut out some eyes. I can throw them on and see what they look like. And if they don't work open, then we go closed. That's as easy as that. But I've just been putting other pieces down. I feel like that's such a simple last minute thing to do that I haven't been focusing on it. But we'll get there. We will get there. So Maggie Shaver, you you hold on. You hold on a minute. Cinnamon raisin bread. Ew, raisins. No, no way. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, they're a doctor in this chat. We need answers. If there is a doctor talking or if there's someone who's seen the light and walked towards it for a minute, uh, we'll also accept that at this point, but, um, just the, uh, let's see what happens if I put big eyes on this crooner. Is it funny to put like, again, no, that's too big. I don't like that. I can already tell that's too big. Let's, let's forget that. And do the eyes have to be separated or can they be close together? There's uh, Mike Wazowski. Hold on one second. We'll get the other eye in here for you. Cinnamon swirl bread is better. I just, raisins, you don't put raisins. You're like, hey, you know what would be good is raisin coconut and orange and chocolate flavors together. No way. Barf City. I don't want any part of that. Okay, so here's the topic of the night for those that are watching and, and are, are haven't tuned out because Leo left and it's just, you're stuck with little old me. Um, what is, is a food that you absolutely hate that everybody else is like okay with? Like most people like raisins or are okay with raisins. I want no part of raisins. I want them, I want them gone. Same thing with coconut. They can, they can, part this earth and I will be forever grateful. So what do we think? Do we think eyes like that? La, 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 la. Should they be lower? Should they be, is it, actually, is that funnier if they're like poking off of the head up there? Uh, Corey totally, did, does it, <laughs> Corey didn't, Corey, you deserted me. How dare you? No one would ever do that. Um, <laughs> 
Sweet potatoes. Lauren had sweet potatoes tonight. What do I have against raisins? Raisins are gross. Grapes, how can you have this, uh, this is called Mark Hoffman's Venting Corner. How can you have a grape that tastes so good and is amazing and then you just kind of like get rid of a little bit of the water and it tastes like butt? <laughs> like why, why is that a thing? Like you can take, I'm trying to think of other foods that like you take away a little bit of water and it's not that awful. Um, okay, like here's one, fruit roll-ups. Like if you do dry your own fruit, like I could do uh, dried mango, still tastes like mango, right? Still has the mango flavor, but somewhere in the, somewhere in the like, the process of drying out a grape, all the good flavor goes away and you're just left with like nastiness. I don't know what it is, but see now my wife's, uh, uh, craisins? No, same thing, crazy. I'm, I'm out on craisins as well. I mean, I don't like cranberries to begin with, just in general, so it's not already, it's not winning right there. You know the other one? Figs. I'm not into figs. People like fig newtons? No way. I want the other newtons. I want the, I want the, the, the non-fig newtons. And the reason being, not only because I just, figs are not, not a jam for me, but um, figs, uh, wait, they put, they put sugar in what, Corey? Oh, you're saying fruit roll-ups? Um, the thing with figs that I don't like now is I found out that basically figs, most of them have dead wasps in them <laughs> or like a part of a wasp in it. And like, I don't want to eat bugs, especially like, and now that I know that I don't want to have any part of it, but you know, you do you, I guess. Dried blueberries, blazons, mmm, dried banana, basins, mmm. Let's see, what's the funniest dried fruit we can come up with? Peaches, paisins, watermelons are way, ways. Watermelons is waisins is pretty good because it's like a little kid trying to say raisins, but it's just waisins. What kind, what kind of dried fruit do you like? Waisins. Like that's pretty good. But there's probably something else that's just as good, but I just I can't think of it right now. Uh, hmm. I'm just trying to see and make sure this holds up where the, the edge of that has to be. Yeah, because then it can come down there. Okay, we're good. So, do we want help me out, folks? Oh, dried watermelon was awful. We tried that. Dried watermelon was nasty. Uh, I don't know if that's the same thing that you tried, Corey, but oof, uh, some quasins. Uh, oh, I feel like I'm trying to like go up and down the like the aisles at the store apricot ap appra appraisins uh raspberry black blackberries uh i'm literally like going through the grocery store right now trying to figure out if there's something there plantate plant plantations no i don't like that instead of plantains um okay so the eyes should i have little eyes here should i have his eyes closed and so it'd be like, uh, let's do, I'll make some little eyes that are closed so we can see what it would look like. Is it funnier to have him like mid croon? Uh, maybe the watermelon jerky that we had or the, the watermelon stuff was just, it tasted so bad because it was like, it was from watermelons from like the summer that they had to, they had to put together as, uh, um, you know, late in the season, they were kind of already bad. And they just dried those out. So if I did this, is the are the eyes closed? And I'm not saying this is exactly it, but are the eyes closed better than the eyes open? That's what I need to know. Squinty eyes. Hmm, let's see. Hold on a second. Let me get. Let me do this. I'm going to put these in so people can see it without me having to like, um, having to draw them yet. So let's, let's put some little, some little squinty eyes in. So it's like, da, 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 Fingers are sticky. There we go. Nope. Oh, that one's 
Oops, that one's problematic. Let's try to try a different one. There. Do we like, like, what are we thinking, folks? I need your help. You get to decide tonight. Your part is participatory. Closed dispute, eyes closed. Okay, we can do eyes closed. And maybe I'll do them. You know, I might do them in like the blue or something so they're maybe not as as punchy as the black. So it stands out. I just, the black is a, uh, easier to see on screen, but I could probably do this. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut it out like this. Make it a little bit smaller. Da, 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 da. There we go. There we go. Cut it in half. And then cut out the centers. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, bye, Corey. Uh, uh, what? So, other foods that people hate, though? Um, what are some other some other foods that I what are some other foods that I hate, Lauren? Besides your cooking, boom, boom, boom. Uh, uh let's see what what's uh. I don't like the concept. I don't like the concept of meatloaf i don't really eat meatloaf but i don't like the concept of oh you know what i don't like this, this is a good one uh, uh i don't like reheated chicken i'm i'm out on that one never is good never is good cantaloupe's a good one bear edwards cantaloupe that's a uh, cantaloupe is the uh like uh, I'm trying to, is the parsley, <laughs> the parsley of fruits is there. People put it in things because, you know, it sort of looks nice, but effectively doesn't really do much. Um, it doesn't have the, the pizzazz or the, uh, it, it's, it's sort of like lacking in flavor, especially when you get a, like, I understand that cantaloupe is not always the best thing in the world to begin with but if you get a bad cantaloupe even worse that is like walk away you got to get out of town because that sucker is is not good at, at all wait you know the food i hate that everyone likes what is oh rosemary i'm gonna out lauren right here lauren doesn't like rosemary she's a traitor she won't have, have like focaccia bread or something like that because it has rosemary on it I think that's that's a real wimp move, if you ask me. That's someone who just can't hack it in this world of ours. Oh, you don't like the, you like these these first eyes that I cut out like these? Because I can be a little bit more, more weird with them like this. Is that what you're saying, Lauren? Okay, we can do that. Do do do. do. Let's get these out of here because they're not glued down 100%. Like this, give it a second and it'll show up. I can do that. What? Huh? Uh oh, sorry. I just got the dog started. I heard a little whoop. Uh, thoughts on spinach? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Are you saying that you don't like spinach there? Because if that's what you're saying there, Anita, that's not that's not fair. Spinach is wonderful. Spinach is better than like most uh, superfoods. People are like, oh, kale is amazing. You know what? Spinach has more nutrients than kale, so like, why even bother with kale? Kale's for wimps. That's what I say. You don't come for spinach. Yeah, Lauren says, don't come for spinach in this household. She is right. We serve on the Spinach Council of New England, and uh, they uh, 
they've been known to uh, pull up outside people's houses and uh, challenge them to duels. And guess what? They're going to win because they have all that iron. They have they have the ability. There's my eyes right there. Sponsored by Big Smith. Yeah. You know what? Popeye, personal friend of mine. We go way back. back. Hold on. Let me get these eyes. Oh, no. Uh, hold on. Let me see what's going on here. Maggie Schaefer, perfect. There you go. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas, as some people will say. Not me. I never say that, but I did this time. Okay, so we talked about foods we don't like. Now let's jump to something else. What is, uh, oh, what's a, what's a musical band that people seem to like that you just don't get or don't like? You know, a musician or a band. Like if you're like, everybody loves Beyonce. I don't get Beyonce. Sure, fine, whatever. Which is partially true for me. I don't really quite understand the appeal of Beyonce. She's probably a lovely person, but just not my thing. But is there is there someone that you're like you absolutely despise? Like my wife, you know, she she loves oats, but she doesn't like Daryl Hall, right? She thinks Daryl Hall is the worst, but absolutely crushed over uh, John Oates. Uh, hold on. Yeah, you do to see a beloved cartoon character powered by race. <laughs> yeah, Taylor Swift. I don't despise. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't get the obsession, but you know, whatever. People can have their fun. They they can think that Taylor's Taylor's the the most wonderful human being in the world. I heard, I heard that she made pop tarts for all the chiefs. You know, if that doesn't mean something, then what does? That's, I don't know what that meant by if that doesn't mean something. Um, I'm looking to see if I want to trim this at all. Is it better tighter? I feel like it kind of is. I don't know if I need that extra. Maybe I'll trim off some. It's really tall. All then though, I need something over here. here. Need something like back over here too. Part of it is I just need like some water or something of the sort. Um, come on, people. BTS, get it? I understand it. I don't get. No, wait. That's I'm saying it the wrong way. I don't understand the the love and affection for BTS. But you know what? That's also not my generation. And who am I to say that you can't love some dudes or something? Because I don't know them. They may be fine. So they're just not my jam. What about uh, uh, like, okay, uh, Hootie and the Blowfish? You know, some people dig it. I'm just kidding; they don't really. Um, who's a, who's a, who's a good one? There's got to be a good one that like everybody's like, oh, that, that's the one. Hoobastank. Nope. Uh, why do I feel like there's someone? I feel like there's someone that's like countryish that I don't quite understand. I don't know. I can't think of it. You never liked Smashing Pumpkins? Smashing Pumpkins was just some. I thought Smashing Pumpkins were cool when I was a freshman in high school. And then after that, I was kind of like, yeah. You know, despite all the rage, I was. Uh, I was not feeling that rat in the cage or something at a certain point. But Siamese Twin, that Twins, that album, I was like, I was okay with. Let's see. Uh, okay. Beyond that, how about shows? Let's go to shows or movies. Shows or movies. Um, uh, 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 Titanic. Not my thing. People love Titanic and saw it so many times, and I think that was probably just a like a generational thing. But uh, Siamese twi Siamese twins. Even I know it's Siamese dream. It is Siamese dream. 
you know, it was when I was younger. Uh, this, uh, I see pretty everywhere. This is uh, acrylic gouache and a little bit of acrylic uh, on tracing paper, yes. And then cut out and put down. Um, shoot, what is, I feel like there's some other, uh, some other like go-to um, movie that like everybody loves. Oh, you know what? I may get in trouble for this one. Lord of the Rings. Meh. Meh. Um, uh, uh, let's try and think if there's any other ones that are like that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not into the like high fantasy stuff all that much. Uh, Brad, did you never seen Titanic? It's so good. Ooh, creating Athena. What are you doing? Goonies. Oh, now we got a controversy going. Let's talk. Actually, Goonies is good. It's not It's not the best, so I'm not going to fight you on that one. I'm not going to fight you on that one. Um, I'm trying to get if there's a movie that's so good that most people think is bad. Like the other way around. Um, or a food or any of those things where it's like, everybody's like, this is the best thing ever. And I, uh, yeah, Dakota, uh, Dakota Cody. There's Star Wars. I can get it. I can get it. There's, um, if you don't get into, like, I like the original stuff, maybe. And then after that, like, yeah, I don't really care for the, like, uh, well, obviously the, the prequels, a lot of people didn't like. But, like, I think part of the reason why I liked it was not because they're great movies or anything of the sort, but because of a nostalgia factor, which I don't think is merit enough for them to be good movies. Um, but you're switching the topic so fast we can't get her. Okay. What, uh, what do people like for, um, uh, what's their favorite podcast? No, wait, change that. What do people like for their favorite show? No, wait, change that. Um, ooh, okay. Here's one. Here's one. Here's the, here's the question. Uh, uh, oh, creative, creating Athena. This was movies that you, oh, wait, I guess that's true. Yeah, movies you liked that you thought people didn't like. That's where we were going with that. So that's where I was trying to figure out. Um, or movies that you hated. But I've, I've thrown out too many things. So we're going to change, we're going to change the topic now. We're going to go to this. Um, what about, uh, uh, shoot, now I just lost it slow down i'm like manic all of a sudden what what about this what about this uh uh okay okay favorite cereal go i'm gonna stay on favorite cereal for a long time now we gotta spend 30 minutes on it because my wife said slow down because it's all about her I know, I know. I know. Okay, your favorite cereal. Let's go. Come on. Favorite cereal. I'm waiting for cereal stuff. Oh, no one wants to talk cereal now. All of a sudden, too hot a topic. I got you. Don't want to offend people. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna straight up go uh, Lucky Charms. I don't think there's anything finer in a cereal. And I am the person who would save the cereal, the marshmallows to the end. And you know what? What the best marshmallows at the end are? It's not the rainbows. It's not the, the crazy colored things. No, it's the plain old red balloons. Mm. Red balloons are by far the best. If you think there's anything, uh, Special K is good. Special K is pretty, pretty good. Apple Jacks, Count Chocula, Quix. What is Quix? What is Quix? Illustrated. Tell me what Quix is. Is it? It's not Kix. I'm assuming, like, like the the one that eats up the roof of your mouth. Quisp. What are these cereals? Where where do you guys where are you finding these like make believe cereals here? You're like, oh, you know what's a really good cereal? Doorbells. I think doorbell's the best cereal ever. No, that's not a real cereal. I don't know what Quisp. 
or Quixis. I don't know. Those are those are made up. Unless you can prove it. I don't believe it. And I don't know if you can prove it. So there. Illustrated. See, you're coming in. You're coming in hot saying it's this thing and you don't even know how to spell it. It's almost as if you're like, hey, Siamese twins versus Siamese dreams. And you can't do that in this in this household. I need a, a little, a little tiny black marker. A little tiny black marker. There it is. Google it, youngster. How dare you? No. It's like saying, you can't say Google it, youngster, because, like, I'm not that young. But um, also, uh, maybe you say Google it, person with good taste. Why don't you say that? Because I have good taste. <laughs> I'm getting, like, sassy now. You can't, you can't come in here and act like... I'm young and and sprightly. What is Quisp though? Explain to me what Quisp is. Is it like, first of all, is it someone trying to say crisp and they're just not good at it? Or is it like, is it corn based? Is it oat based? Is it um, qu 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 uh, I don't know what else, if there's any anything with a Q. I can't say it. Quisp is little saucier shaped sugar coated corn cereal. Saucer shape. That's all right. You're gonna choose that over something like uh Fruit Loops or um uh cookie crisp. Actually I think cookie crisp is gross. because I don't like people who like to to break the law, you know? And that dog, uh, uh, is, I don't remember if the dog was the one that was robbing. Maybe it wasn't. But you can't just walk around and take someone else's cookies. That's wrong. That's punishable by, by going to hell, man. I got up too early this morning, in case you couldn't tell. My brain is turning to mush now, and I think it's pretty swell. Uh, creative thing, do I use Mod Podge or anything to cover the collage paper in the end? No, I don't. I just, it's as is, and so the edges come up a little bit, but uh, that's, that's what this baby is for. This baby is wonderful. Uh, why is it going behind the left arm? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I see pretty everywhere. I just said I got up early this morning, and that's why it's going behind my left arm. I will fix that, and no one will be the wiser. Um, that's funny, though. I mean, I kind of dig it, but I that's too that's too weird. Um, that's a good catch. Good catch. Of the light, I see pretty things. Winds, I see pretty everywhere. What did I say? I see pretty things. Did I say I see pretty things? Or it is? Uh, I'm falling apart, people. But I don't smell toast, so that's good. All right, someone give me give me a, a question for a hot take. To me asking the questions, I want you asking the questions. What do you think I would have to decide between? Give me would you rather's, and I'll give you my reasonings. The harder, the better. Awesome. Would you rather's? Would you rather's? Give me a would you rather. There should be a game called Would You Rather Dan Rather. And then it's questions for him specifically. Is Dan Rather still alive? Is that bad to ask?
What do you mean you guys take this one? What does that mean, Lauren? Oh, okay. Would you rather than rather? Would you rather more or least safer? Would you rather than rather? Tell me about your night. Um, okay, would you rather eat a cereal bowl of raisins or a whole cantaloupe? Uh, I'm going whole cantaloupe on that. 100%. I can take cantaloupe. That's fine. That is a okay uh, compared to a whole bowl of raisins. You know what I'd rather do? I'd rather eat that cantaloupe and then take those raisins and take them out in the road and let cars run over them until they're squished and they're nothing. And then I'm going to let the rain wash it away and poison the rivers because that's how bad raisins are. What if it's a bad cantaloupe? You know what? Even if it's a bad cantaloupe, still better than bad than a bowl of raisins. You give me cantaloupe that like it's not even it's not, not even orange anymore. I'll eat that any day over a bowl of raisins. I mean, raisins raisins they they start out as grapes, right? And like then the sun, the the nature just beats down on them and turns them into husks of of awfulness and then you expect me to just go yeah you know what that's cool no no that don't work that way Lauren you know what if you get a rotten cantaloupe guess what I'm going to hide rotten cantaloupe in your food, too. And I know you hate cantaloupe. You hate it bad. Would you rather be stranded on, deserted, on a deserted island or stuck in a submarine with a group of chatty Cathy's? Oh, island, all the way. Because, like, an island you can probably survive, I assume, in some sense, or at least for a bit of time. But a submarine, like, I don't want to be trapped under the water. The only way I'd want to be trapped under the water in the submarine is if I had to come up to the surface and it was just raisins everywhere. Then keep me underwater. But I don't want I don't want any part of uh, being trapped underwater if I can avoid it. I don't like the deep dark ocean. That's scary. I don't like the idea that there's something underneath me that I don't know what it is. And so. I I want, to, I want to avoid that. You know what's probably down there? Raisins. You know why they put raisins down there? Because people threw them down there because they hate them so much. I did. I, I'm just coming out hard for raisins. I may get sponsored by Fisker Shears tonight, but raisins, the Raisin Council, no way. They're gonna they're gonna shun me for the rest of life. Uh, you can only pick one art medium. What is it? Ooh. No wait. Okay. So like right now I'm doing collage, right? But that I have to define. You gotta help me define the rules here. If I'm doing collage, is it just like I can have colored paper, but I can't use glue, or is it like collage and then I can use glue and and that kind of stuff? If it's um like what are, what are those parameters that's what i need to know and then i'll tell you then i'll tell you uh wait hold on um, was i yes i guess i agree you are stuck both places for the same amount of time yeah let's see a uh, fact the california rains of the 80s me are all for prison I'm in prison for murder. <laughs> uh, I will not be. I will not be chased by raisins tonight. I will not let that happen. I will never let that ha happen. There is. There is no, nothing. There is no uh, raisins. Don't scare me. It's 
not that I'm afraid of them or anything. I just don't like them. I'm trying to think of other foods that I'm like dead set against. Mushrooms. I'll eat mushrooms if they're in something, like they're in a sauce or something like that. I'm like, fine. They're hidden. But if you just give me a plain old mushroom, nah. Okay, colored pencils. Oh, okay, so creative Athena. I got to choose one thing. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with a mechanical pencil. That's what I'm going to go with. And the reason for it is not because of any sort of like, um, like that's the tool that I use, but I feel like pencil is like a go-to because it's just like, you know, universally you can still draw with it. It doesn't, doesn't require a lot of like, oh, I got to go get, water and paints and brushes and things of sort you can kind of walk with it but mechanical specifically because you can use a mechanical thing and it just takes time and you can get to like big bold beautiful drawings but i feel like it's if you have just a regular pencil it's much harder to maintain a sharp line so i think just it's easier to get wild with a mechanical pencil than it is to get uh to get defined with a um a non uh, uh, a regular old like 2H pencil or that kind of thing, you know? It's about flexibility with the medium. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Um, okay, I need another would you rather. Come on, give me a tough one. No one's getting me anything that I've taken more than a few seconds to answer, which means that people aren't aren't really challenging me. I need something that's gonna scare me. It's gonna be so challenging of an idea that I just don't know how to process it. But no one's stepping up to the bat. Everybody's afraid. Everybody's afraid. Uh, would you rather shave your head or your whole body? Ooh, who's to say I don't shave my whole body already? Boom, now you're thinking about it. Um, I just choose, let's see. See, I've shaved my head before. And I, I'm not a hairy person in general, so like, shave my body, like, that'd take two seconds to do. It's not really gonna do much. Um, but, I'll up the ante. If I had to, uh, if I had to shave my head for the rest, <sighs> ready? If I had to shave my head, only half of my head though, so like the right half, but not the left half, and I had to walk around like that for a week, or I had to shave my eyebrows. Uh, uh, let's see, which one of those two would I do? I think I shaved my eyebrows. The reason being, I wear dark glasses, so it could probably be hidden behind there. And I don't have real dark eyebrows to begin with. So I feel like there's at least some cover-up I could do there, but the top of the head is harder. I mean, I guess you could wear a hat, but like, you know, is that really the, the same in a way? Uh, or is that somehow like cheating the system uh let's see okay so i'll pose i'll pose one for everybody this is the would you rather you must say why you choose what you choose though you can't just say like if i say a or b you can't just go a you gotta say a because ready so the would you rather is uh if you had to ooh, ooh, i got one if you had to permanently have a rib sticking out of your chest like it's it's not like it's bleeding or anything but just the rib pokes out of the skin or uh 
you had to have uh, your once once a day for an hour, your jaw would come unhinged and just hang. Which one do you choose? Take it. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Your jaw hanging loose or a rib. Would you rather go on a mission to Mars never to return or lead a group on an African safari wearing a meat suit? Um, I'm going to go. Wait, the, the I guess the, the question that pops into my head right off the bat is, am I going to Mars with anybody? Because if I can go with other people, then yeah, fine. If I'm going by myself, then I'm going to meet suit. As one does. Lauren, yes, you could tie a scarf around your head for that part of the day. You were allowed that. Uh, a rib, easy to hide, and you know when it's coming. Like, I'm like... The jaw. Mm. I would I would immediately and I don't know why people aren't asking how far does the rib stick out? Because to me that's kind of important in this situation. But if you all just want to go with like, hey, what if it sticks out like a foot? There's no that's harder to hide. But you're all just gonna let that one slide. Okay, whatever, you know. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, um, you have to choose between one of these two things. Would you rather have to wear your shoes on the wrong feet for the rest of your life? Or when you put your shoes on, they're slightly damp on the inside. <laughs> I heard that one, Lauren. Uh, uh. Okay, give me answers, folks. Shoe on the wrong foot for the rest of your life. Or, and I say for the rest of your life as well, it's slightly damp. Not wet, but damp. So we got one, one for damp. Maggie Schaefer, you need to explain yourself. You can't just say, Thing you got to give a reason, these are the rules of the night. some reason I'm not feeling those eyes now. It's not that the eyes are the, it's not the shape, it's the color of them feel a bit too dramatic. Let me see if I can tone them down. Um, foot fungus on that damp shoe, you're right. When it comes through with a solid point, you don't wanna get foot rot, or uh, what's that called? Uh, something rot, no. There's a term for it when your feet get like damp forever. It was like in war, I know that it showed up there a lot. Um, not gangrene, but it was something like that. Uh, swamp foot. Uh, no. Jungle rot. There you go. Thank you. But she's on the wrong feet would cripple me within a few hours. See, I feel like that's a better question just because, like, both of those are not the worst thing in the world, but they're also kind of, like, both of them are not fun. And I feel like they're comparable. Let's see if there's any other ones I can come up with. Uh, mm. Okay. The feeling, you have to choose between these two now. 
the feeling of having something stuck in between your teeth that's a little too big it's not just like oh you got a little piece of spinach in there but it's like something jammed in between your teeth for the rest of your life or or every time you swallow it feels like when you swallow a tortilla chip that's too big that's your choice pick and choose people make some decisions now's the time Something between the teeth because you feel like you get used to it. I can understand that. I can understand that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's other like, would you rather that would be fun to. Would you rather hmm. in your life be kicked by a donkey once? Not like something that would like make you, you know, lose your memory or something of the sort, but just, you know, enough. Something that wouldn't feel great. Uh, or, um, so, like, doesn't put you in the hospital, but, like, you know, takes the wind out of you and makes you feel nauseous for a few hours. Or, would you rather get a brand new shirt and you have to go out to a fancy dinner or something you know a fancy event and you accidentally uh throw up on it but everybody knows that you threw up on it you can clean it as much as you want but they know that that dinner that you threw up on it so you have to be there and entertain and, and talk to people and so like would you rather have a stained a stained shirt at a dinner party or be kicked relatively hard, but there's no embarrassment factor by a donkey. Or would you rather go to a dinner party with a donkey? How about that? Pick and choose. Pick and choose. Pick and choose. Choose and pick. Pick your shoes. Do do to lose. Throw up, I think. Oh, Laura wants to get thrown up on. Wait, no, that's not right. Oh, yeah. What if it's someone else's throw up? Take the donkey to the dinner. Kevin Hang says, throw up. And so I didn't say how much throw up, too. That's the other. I like the fact that the term throw up. Throw up's a funny word. Okay, talk to me now about, oh, that's a bad topic. Sorry, Lauren. Talk to me about um, uh, funny words or phrases you used as a kid for things. So like, what made me think that is like, and sorry, Lauren, but like the word boot or throwing up is a funny way to say throw up. But are there other words and things like that that you, you used as a kid for 
various things. I'm not saying it has to be for that subject specifically, but like those kind of things. Are there words that were funny that you used? I think I've gone too fast through so many things that now no one knows what to say. Everybody's torn. Everybody's like, I don't know anymore. I scared people off. Did I scare people off, Lauren? Uh, 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 90s slang video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Flippy dippy. I'm trying to see if I put little, like, little eyes on these guys. Does it help? I have to take my dog tomorrow to the vet because she pee pees a lot. You're welcome, everybody. Do 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 do. I wrote that just for you. Do 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 do. -de. There's a frog right there. I'm gonna put little eyes on these guys because that's fun. If you don't like it, guess what? You can deal with it. Wait. Would you rather win a Pulitzer or a Nobel Prize? Uh, I'm going Pulitzer. For the rest of life, you're like, oh, I won the Nobel Prize. Or you're going to be like, I won the Pulitzer. It's so much funnier to say Pulitzer. Yeah, I just got the thing too that says we're having trouble loading the video. I'm going to look and see. Hopefully it's still going on this end. Let's double check. Am I still live up here, everybody? Looks like I am. Maybe in our our house I think it's in our house everybody calm down don't get don't get angry at me speaking of that Pulitzer did I miss Leo uh yeah Saxton Moore Productions uh Leo was on earlier tonight uh, he had to step out um to work on some stuff I will be posting in a matter of uh probably about 20 minutes or so I guess on my Instagram, the feed, so you can go back and watch uh, what we talked about and all that fun stuff. Um, so he will be, it will be available soon for you to partake in. Um, and then it will be on YouTube as well uh, over the weekend. I will try to post it up on YouTube for folks. Um, and so it will be available. But yes, he has, he has stepped off for the evening. We had a lo lovely time though. Pulitzer. What's your, what's your favorite, like, I mean, I guess you could say, like, Nobel, like, depending on how you say it. Do you like, do you like a Pulitzer or a no, Nobel? But I think, yeah, Pulitzer just says, it says literally pew in it, which is funny. And I'm a little boy. I think that that is funny. I'm a little boy. If there is, I mean, if the, what I'm trying to think if there's other ones that were like in that same range of like Pulitzer. It sure is fun to say. Let's see if I can get little eyes up here. That I don't particularly like this color eye. I like the little bit of variation in the eye. Let me, where's my blade? There it is. Someone else asked me a would you rather or I'm still laughing at it. But chicken leaves. What are 
Where's chicken leaves? What did I miss? Where's chicken leaves coming from? Who's talking about chicken leaves? Is that what feathers are? Does someone call feathers chicken leaves? Uh, Saxon Moore Productions. How many books have you uh, do you have published, and have you written any of your books? I've written two, and uh, I have illustrated. I'm on, like, I've written two, and then there are thirteen others that I've worked on. One of them I'm working on right now. I'm in the the. Uh, I'm waiting for the manuscript, and then I'll be sketching in a matter of like a week or something like that. Um, so, in that range. If that's helpful, I hope that's helpful. I hope you're like, oh, that's that's brilliant. Thanks for the share. <laughs> what are chicken leaves? I feel like I've been left out of the party. No one's telling me what chicken leaves are. People walking around talking about chicken leaves, and all of a sudden I'm just left out high and dry. Let's not tell Mark. Let's make him question. Is that what this is? Is this some sort of like something to make me get paranoid? Are chicken leaves me? Am I a chicken leaf? No one's answering me. I'm getting scared now. Why are we doing this to me, people? Why am I? Is it Elvis frog? What? Oh, it's, yeah, it's just a crooner frog. Yeah, just an old, old timey crooner. There was an old cartoon that I remember from when I was little that had a chicken, a bunch of chickens around, and a rooster came in. And it was this kind of like old crooner rooster, and he would sing. Um, Mrs. Hoffman, I gotta go way back and find it in there. I don't wanna. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, feathers, chicken leaves. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed. I just don't wanna have to go all the way back in the feed because my hands are sticky and I wanna touch the screen. Um, anyways, uh, 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 so it was a, a rooster that was singing to a bunch of chickens, and then he was so cool and smooth about it that all the chickens laid eggs, like tons and tons of eggs right then and there, and they all went. Bloo, 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 bloo. And they all were like sitting on a giant pile of eggs by the end because he was such a good uh, crooner. And to me, that was always really funny as an idea. And so crooners have to like, it, they would, if I remember correctly, like the rooster leaned into the mic really big time. So he would like, you know, sort of like lean in and sort of almost like he was going to kiss it. I, I, I feel like it was part of an old like Warner Brothers something or other, but I could be wrong on that. It may have been some other source, but I'm glad you remember it, Lauren. Yes, it was a blah, 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 blah. Bing Crosby. You're right. It was that sort of vibe. Not Bing, Bing, is it Ben? It's shiny eyelids. Wait. Oh, on the, on the, I thought you were talking about the frog at one point. I'm like, why is my, my frog had shiny eyelids. I might put it like a thing up here that just says ribbit later or something of the sort. And that's what he's singing. First, I just got to get all these eyes in though. Ribbity bibbity bibbit. A ribbity bibbity boo. Uh, Saxon Moore Productions. How long have I been working professionally in public uh, publishing? So I have been working in uh, KidLit since 2015 and been professionally illustrating basically since the year 2000. In the year 2000. In the year 2000. Um, so that's my a track record. Um, but yeah.
Yeah, Kidlit since 2015 basically is when I worked on my first book. I'm getting out of the end where my fingers are just too sticky at the end of the night. These are my frog peoples. Frog people sitting here listening to these tunes. Doodly doodly loons. Uh, let's see. Google tells me it was a Warner Brothers cartoon called Swooner Crooner. I don't know. Why does everybody remember that one? And it's, I'm not saying like, oh, how dare everybody remember that one. But like, it seemed like it all, the one thing that was about that cartoon too, is like, it felt like it was an old cartoon that was being aired again after sort of, like, it didn't feel like it was of our time. It felt like it was an old one that they just happened to be re-airing. And I could be wrong. It might've been, it just like a Bing Crosby joke felt maybe like it was a, a little uh, dated, potentially, for the audience that was watching it at the time. Because, you know, there were a bunch of little kids who were really into Bing Crosby. 1944, thank you. Is it really that old? Jeez. I remember seeing it in, like, the like 80s or something, like early 80s. It also makes sense because, like, it is probably... A little too uh, racy of an idea. They're just like, let's have a bunch of chickens lay a bunch of eggs because they're so in love with this crooner. Like, I don't know if they would do the same thing nowadays. In cartoons. Does anybody remember the cartoon show Cops? It was C period, O period, P period, S period. It was like, uh, I don't remember how to describe it. I, I know it was sort of like people, they were cops and they all had like cool superpower kind of things. That would like, one would, uh, their, you know, they'd have, their fists would shoot out or something. I don't know, it was all sorts of weird drawn stuff, but. Uh, section more productions. Since you create hand-drawn art, do you send the originals to publishers or are you responsible for scanning and photographing your work? Technically, I could send in the work. That is that is something that is feasible. Um, but I always scan in the work um, because I want control over the small little details. So like, I wanna make sure that the, the colors are the way that I want, the textures are the way that I want. If I hand off control of that, the publisher it's not that the publisher won't do a good job i'm sure they do a, a decent job but they might not do the exact job that i would want with it and so the more control that i have on my end the better in my mind and so i go to the trouble of uh of like scanning and tweaking and what uh, as best i can on my end so when it gets to them it's not as much of an issue let's see uh man my hands are sticky where are we time-wise? Oh, we're getting close. I gotta wrap this bad boy up. This glue stick is also causing all sorts of problems right now for me. There's too much glue coming off of it, which is also making my finger sticky. Err. Here we go. Uh, um, but so I just I, and also I scan. I don't I don't photograph the. The work is holds up so much better when it's scanned. I don't have to worry about special lighting or anything of the sort. And the scanner does a good job of piecing stuff together, especially if it's big. Um, I just use a, a little Epson V600 um, Perfection or Epson Perfection V600 scanner. Um, I didn't realize they were as expensive as they are. I, I always thought they were a little bit cheaper, but then I looked them up the other day, and they're I think it runs about 350 bucks for one, but they last for years. And so I, I'm all all good with, uh, with putting the money into them because they do last a long time, the Epson scanners, versus using a scanner printer. Let's see if I can make that little correction. That piece has, for some reason, a little nugget right there that I gotta get rid of. 
Oh, oh, here it comes. Here we come. Maggie Schaefer coming in hard. Uh, would I rather have sticky fingers or oily hair? I'm going sticky fingers. And I think there's a couple reasons why. Reason number one, I feel like sticky fingers is also like a term for someone who like steals things. So there's like this cool rebellious thing that goes with it. Reason number two, oily hair. Although I'm not trying to like judge if someone has oily hair, that's okay. Oily hair is not the worst thing in the world. But I feel like sticky fingers, maybe you can hide a little easier. Like you could wear gloves. Just be like, oh yeah, you know, I just, my hands are cold. And then you're not sticking to things. Maybe you stick to the inside of the gloves, but you're not sticking to other things. Oily hair, I feel like is maybe a little harder to disguise in those situations. And so then all of a sudden you're like stuck with with oily hair constantly and that just seems like it's a pain um and so that's my that's my hot take for the minute it's been hot take do i want to put ribbit up there or is that too boring that's probably too boring they'd also get colors in on these guys so they have some more Texture wextures. So much glue on my fingers. Get some of these colors up in there. Lauren, you getting tired up there? So you getting tired up there? Oh, you just found that one? I mean, is it the way that, that I remember though? Just like the, they just like, he sings and they go blue. Oh, I don't remember that. Uh, Charles Santoso, I did not talk to him about uh, procrastination. Um, would have been a good question, uh, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't get around to that one. I'm trying to figure out if there's like something funny I could put here. It isn't like too laborious. Like, should I put um, like some music notes in his hand? Should I put uh, I'm trying to think of like what could be there? A little tadpole and a baby. And baby uh, blanket. Uh, okay, folks. Charles and Tessa, thank you. What should, what, should I, what should I put up here? Lauren, help me out. Like, should he have something that's helping him sing? Should it be... What if he's like, what if he's got a little fly there that he's crooning? Is that funny? What if he's duetting with a fly? What? what? Did he just say that? Oh yeah, love struck fly. There you go. Just a little, a little guy right there on some little twig legs. Maybe a little pink dress. That'd be funny, a little pink dress on a fly. Like right 
right here. A little fly inside, and little wings. I think that's what we do. And a little necklace. Which is a little thing like this. And little legs that stick down. Okay, so let's get that down there. Put on a plate. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's get a little pink dress down here. Woo, 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 woo. Everybody, that's the sound of my dog. And that dog is a pain. That dog is a noodle. Noodle is a pain. Yes, you heard me correctly. Our dog is an absolute pain. Because she barks to nothing. And she barks at everything. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn that into a little fly. I need to do this. I need to get some little legs like that. I need to get uh, little wings. Maybe some little eyes. Let's see what happens if I make some bigger eyes here, though. some little eyes like this. I'll make her looking at him. And maybe some little white wings that stick out the back. Uh, can I pet that dog? Oh, can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? Redworth, you could pet that dog. That dog is also very noisy. It might cause problems. And that dog might also pee everywhere. So you make that call. Do you want to be responsible for that dog peeing everywhere? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. That dog does pee everywhere, I'll tell you that much. Get these wings in here. And I'll draw a little hands and a little golden necklace. A little bouffant hairdy. Bouffant. What's that fellow's <laughs> what's that fellow's name? Oh, that's Reginald de Bouffant. He's from, he's from Georgia, Reginald Bouffant. I like the name Buford. Thank you, you're welcome. I like the name Buford. I gotta give this. This little lady, a uh, uh, 
a necklace of sorts. It's gonna show up. That's not gonna show up yet. Hold on a second. Oh, I did it now. Lovely little necklace. Couple little things there, and then I gotta give her a little little mouth. Let me do it in a pink like this. There, like that. She's having a good time. I noticed that too, Lauren, so I'm trying to figure out how to make them look maybe a little more antenna-like. Maybe I need to give her a little, like I said, a little bouffant hairdo. Bouffant. And cover those suckers up. Because, yes, I agree that it has the potential to be... this that's pretty funny actually let's do that where's uh i need a lighter color the mouse solved it i, I still i think that i'm gonna tone these down before i stick this down so they don't bleed through as much and maybe i can actually hit them with a little bit of water get that sort of there we go that'll work it up Let's get a little bit of paper towel. Put that paper towel down. Soak up. There we go. It's going away. Let's give that little lady, that little bug lady, a little bouffant hairdo. Because it's funny. Bouffant. Let's get that sucker stuck down there. on it here which is right now it is so we're even with the top of that eye there we go first got a little bouffant hair they're in love As wide as a can there. Let's get maybe a little bit more highlight on that. There too. Now the question is, do I want to trim at all this piece? Like, do I even need that and can I trim it down to a smaller size? I feel like it it doesn't need to go all the way out there. So we could probably trim that down a little. So let's shave off that eye. A little heart somewhere. I could do that. A little heart. Let's go cut this piece down. Where's that blade? 
what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this piece right here now. Who needs a ruler? I don't. Straight edge. go we got down a little bit there let's see do we want to put a little heart a little bitty hearts gotta find uh do i have any good like really light inks? that's too that's too light i think but i can also just draw them in i could take like a little, little pink like this and just go Something of that sort. Maybe not. We'll try that a different way. Here's what I'm gonna do. I gotta find that color that I had, which I don't think is there. Might have put it underneath this. Let's see. Oh, is this it? This is it. Here. Let's see if I can grab like something that's just like barely off in the background color. Throw those on top. They will sort of stick there and they're not like super obtrusive there. It's like some little parts like this. So color wise you're not jumping forward too much. gotten quiet around here. So let's get our glue out. What I'll do is I'll stick them down just one at a time. down in okay 
them out here. We'll press them out. So again, they're not they're not too dramatically in the way of the value that's back there. They kind of sink back a little bit. I can still go over them with a little wash of white and yellow and knock them down even more if it really comes down to it. Let's see. Yeah. So they're subtly there. They may be a little bit too loud yet for me, so I may do that little wash of something on top just to get sort of hierarchy wise, drop them down a step on that ladder of hierarchy. Just so that the, the main issue for me is the bug's hair. The fly's hair is, is getting diminished by them a little bit, so I'm going to lighten them up just a touch. So let's get our paint out here real quick. So we'll do that. That is this one here. We'll just take a little bit of that. A little bit of the yellow that's there. I'm just going to coat them real quick. I said paint. More of that. Just enough to Push them back a level. That's it. Uh, Sheena Mary says, can you give us a recap on what you're doing and why? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a big, broad question about my life or today. Um, what I'm working on today. Uh, what am I doing? So tonight we had on um, Leo, uh, I suppose, a... Uh, 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 Espinosa, so there we go. I don't know why I said Espinosa. Missed a whole, whole constant there. Um, and uh, this is Gavin Doodle, where I am, where I am, where I have people on, guests on to talk and make. Uh, but Leo had to jump off earlier, so it's just me continuing. But it's basically just doodling. And so tonight, um, uh, today is, or it's, it's about to end, but today is leap day. Um, it's about to end where we are at least. And so, um, as tribute to that, I made a frog piece. And so this is my little froggy and he's crooning to a little fly who is his love interest. They're in love. And so we got our little, um, a little love story happening here. Oh, it's so sweet. Um, so, anyways, there's a bunch of frogs watching as they sing a song. Uh, what I might do now is take this and actually, you know what? I'll take the other. There's another pencil. There we go. Here it is. And maybe draw some. Some lines that sort of hint at the idea of singing coming out of that mouth a little bit more so. Something that is that sleeve. I'm just doing touch ups now. Uh, we are at ooh, 11.58. I got like two seconds left and then I got to be done with this. Um, that may honestly be it. I may be able to walk away with that. So here's what I'll do. I will do a couple little, little touches of glue, stick stuff down to make sure it's officially stuck down, and then I will put this in the center and we'll wrap for the night. How's that sound? That sounds lovely to me. Let me get this stuff out of the way, and I will center this out. We got about 30 seconds left. So here we go. One, two, three. So I'm going to get this up here. So again, thank you, uh, for all the, for all's, 
for all that joined me tonight. Um, I will be back next week with another uh, session of Gab and Doodle. Um, again, tonight we had on Leo Espinosa, who was lovely and a pleasure to chat with. Go look up Leo's work um, and give all sorts of fun uh, thanks to him. But here is the finish of the piece for the night. It's my frog crooner. Otherwise, y'all go have a lovely evening, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.